You're listening to Football Friday Night On Demand exclusively on 600 ESPN El Paso. Stay up to date with high school football scores, updates, and news by downloading the free 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. The following is an exclusive presentation of Team 600 ESPN El Paso. This is Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Here are your hosts, Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. It's football Friday night, week four of the Borderland. Now until the clock strikes zero, we have you covered with all the action from West Texas to the land of enchantment. It's a great slate of games tonight on football Friday night, right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. I'm your host, Bo Bagley. Thanks for joining us tonight alongside the hardest workers in the business, Paul McKinnon and the silky smooth Sal Montez. We have 70 years of experience on site in the stadium tonight our 600 ESPN El Paso high school football football reporters are working that beat to bring you the best coverage possible our reporters tonight are Alex Nicholas Steve Escajeda Brandon Cohn Jaime Chavez the coach Adrian Broadus, Joe Rodriguez, Joey Panisi, and J.D. Slursley. Now, we're here to speak the gospel of high school football in West Texas and Southern New Mexico. Paul, excited to have you in. A week off, thanks to UTEP football and Chihuahuas all on the same night. But right back at it, week four, what are you excited for tonight? Well, I'm excited for the Del Valle Conquistadores because with that off, off week, I actually got to swing by and, uh, and watch them take care, really handle uh, uh, America's, you know, not the best Americas we've seen, but still a 6A Americas and a team with a lot of talent. And Del Valle was just a lot better than they are. And really, really, really interested to see what they do at Canyon Tio tonight. Yeah, 3-0 and Del Valle at 2-1 and Canyon Tio. That's our Football Friday Night 600 ESPN El Paso Game of the Week. Sponsored by Cisco Movers. Our Game of the Week reporter is Alex Nicholas tonight. He's out there at Lowenberg Stadium. We'll get to him in just a moment. But 3-0 and Del Valle and 2-1 and Canyon Tio. Del Valle has looked really good. Again, you saw them last week. Canyon Tio 2-1 and coming in after a tough loss. Week 1 to Eastlake. How do you uh, look at this matchup? Well, obviously, uh, I like Delvai coming in just because they do everything well, not just on the offensive side. They have uh, three good receivers, Brandon Tay, as we talked about, uh, Eli, Eli Molina a week ago, second play of the contest. They answered a 17-play, eight-minute drive from Americas to go up three-zip with a 73-yard touchdown uh, reception. Molina takes a little slant, goes all the way. And, uh, you know, other guys, Damian Diaz and, and I said uh, Tayez, and they have uh, Christian Martinez in the backfield who ran for another 130-plus yards, a 73-yard touchdown run. But on the other side, the one thing that America's did, they were able to ground it out against that uh, Del Valle defense. By the way, a great, a pretty terrific Del Valle defense. The D backfield uh, tackles terri- terrifically, really plays assignment football. But Kenny Tio has LJ Martin in the backfield. Uh, Devin Granados, both runners. They may take a crack at uh, what America's had a little bit of success with last week, grinding the ball at that uh, Del Valle defense. They're they're – there is three yards there. It's just what, what the Del Valle de- defense does after that. But uh, that's going to be their shot. If L.J. Martin has a big night, that means Granados have a big night running the ball as well. And then that's what Kenny Tino is going to need to do to stay in this one. And it's going to be a fun one. Let's go live to Lowenberg, the Smurf Turf, and join our Game of the Week reporter, Alex Nicholas, at Canateo's Lowenberg Stadium for this preview. Alex. Good evening, gentlemen. Both teams lining up for the kickoff, Del Valle. Will receive, or excuse me, this will be kind of deal who will receive the opening kickoff. A team of a matchup of two former district rivals. Kind of deal comes in with a two and one record. They'll buy a three and zero. Oh. Like Paul mentioned, it's going to be the battle of the running backs. We've got two very talented running backs here this evening. L.J. Martin averaging six point three yards per carry. Just picked up an offer from Kansas State this week, adding to four other offers, including UTEP and UNLV. On the other side for Del Valle, we'll see Christian Martinez. 484 yards, 7.4 yards per carry, and four touchdowns. Del Valle's offense, very explosive this year. Uh, compared to the past years, where they've sort of maybe been a one-trick pony as far as the run game, but when you put Paul talking about those three receivers, now some interesting news on those three receivers. It looks like backup quarterback Jaime Guerrero is out. So instead of running with the receivers, Eli Molino is actually working with the quarterback. So that's something to definitely keep an eye on in this one. 
Um, historically, Canotillo's had a tough run against Del Valle. Del Valle's 8-1 against Canotillo since 20, uh, 2009. The last Canotillo win was 2016, and then you got to go back to 2008. So Del Valle's had the upper hand in this one with head coach Rudy Contreras, and he's developing that quarterback, Jesse Ramos, 63% passing uh, completion percentage on the year, 413 yards to the air, seven touchdowns, no interception. So the opening kickoff goes out of bounds here on the near side, and we are underway in West El Paso. Between Canotillo and Del Valle, your game of the week. All right, Alex, thank you very much. And hey, we've got an offer for you. You know, Alex got an offer. He got an offer from Union Draft House yeah. to meet up after our after our post show party, food and drinks at Union Draft House at Sunland Park. And our game of the week brought to you by Cisco Movers. Cisco Movers can help with packing, boxing, heavy lifting, and moving your belongings to your next destination. They also offer storage at their facility. Take it from a family owned company like Cisco Movers. They'll give you a great price and help you on that. Next big move, get started by filling out a request form at CiscoMovers.com. Cisco Movers, the best move you'll make in El Paso. And our game of the week sponsor, Cisco Movers, right here on Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Divine Canadio just underway at Julius and Irene Lowenberg Stadium. Another game uh, underway about an hour ago down in Pecos. Right now, just before halftime, Pecos leads Fabens. 31 to 6. Also, Thursday night action up in the land of enchantment. Santa Teresa improves to 4 and 1 overall with a 42 22 victory over Valencia. And then Gadsden improving to 2 and 3 with a win 47 13 over Alamogordo. Again, both those were last night. A big slate of games tonight, Paul. Another big one is Letta and Jefferson. We're going to find out if these Jefferson Silver Foxes are for real. Yeah, and I think they are. Uh, uh, the the win last week against Bel Air was a big one. Bel Air five injured starters. Uh, the biggest one, the Baxter kid who uh, hit Burgess for a couple of hundred yards the week prior. But uh, a lot of a lot of uh, especially in the skill positions, that's always the way I look at these teams. If skill if skill is coming back, you're going to have a pretty good team. What do they have? They have Nathan Alcala, the four year starter at quarterback. He's already had uh, the uh, terrific first month, including a, a pick six opening week. Uh, Alpine. These guys play both sides of the ball in case. In fact, I think that entire a one five di- one five a district. I don't know if any of those teams has more than thirty guys on the roster. And and Jeff uh, goes along with that. But Alcala is terrific in the backfield. He has our Arturo- Rubio, of course, it was his brother, Jose Rubio, that uh, took Jefferson to the playoffs for the first time since 1997. What's that been? Three years ago, uh, a Saturday afternoon uh, against Bowie in the Sun Bowl, three touchdown runs, got him into a five-way tie for the final playoff spot, and then they won the coin flip uh, magnificently. Tony Martinez, is a new head coach there, and uh, and still the same man there. So some of the some of the same family trying to uh, stick things back into the into uh, uh, you know get back into the playoffs. And I think Jeff has a real legit shot uh, this week going against the Sleda team that got thumped, uh, lost by twenty to Riverside last week. Absolutely, three and zero Jefferson hosting two and one Isleta. That's seven p.m. kickoff at Silver Fox Stadium, right down there at Central El Paso on Paisano. Jefferson looking to improve to four and zero. We'll have Coach Jaime Chavez on the call in just a little bit. Another big game, the Battle of the Northeast. So far, the Kings of the Northeast are the Andrus Eagles, but several teams, I'd say about ten to eleven teams, are all on bye weeks. The Andrus Eagles are one of them. Remember, Andrus started out the season with a win over Chapin and then topped. Parkland in a battle of the Northeast. Another battle of the Northeast, the Irvin Rockets tonight against the Chapin Huskies. Irvin coming in 2-1 and one overall while Chapin 1-2. and two. Joey Panisi will be on the call for that one. How do you see that one shaping up, Paul? Yeah, this looks like a pretty even matchup to me. Uh, one I was a little more excited uh, about coming into, well, more on that in a second, but I mean, uh, you know, Jonathan Knutson at Irvin, of course, his brother Adam Knutson, Back-to-back thousand-yard rusher as a quarterback. Well, this is the you know same family Knutson, but a different kind of quarterback. This guy throws the ball around. You know, I talked to uh, Joe Urias, uh, the head coach, a little before the start of the season, and he was throwing Edmund Stansberry comparisons in there. I mean, uh, yeah, true or true or not, I don't know if anybody else sees that. You know, maybe rose-colored glasses, but if that's a guy you're going to compare somebody to, uh, Knutson playing terrifically, and uh, he really every touchdown he's you know he's got his hands directly involved in it but uh, then on the other side we're talking Chapin the biggest problem for them uh, Mason Standifer comes back three-year starter remember he broke his collarbone as a sophomore so he should have three years of experience really doesn't he's he's played you know maybe almost a season 10 games 
may be under his belt, but he looks pretty good. You heard him throw into his uh, brother a week ago. But in the backfield, that's where these guys were supposed to make their bones. And they had, they had thunder and lightning. I called him around. Rochelle Massey was the lightning. He did his ACL preseason. He's not playing anymore this year. But, hey, they still had the thunder Jacob Williamson. Well, yeah, until last a uh, couple of weeks ago. Uh, looks like a lower leg fracture. Our Joey Panisi's on scene. He'll tell us more about that. But it looks like uh, for at least a period of time, Williamson's out as well. So it's going to be a third string uh, running back in the backfield with Mr. Standifer and his receiving core. That's going to make things tougher for Chapin. Timothy Pastron, by the way, a guy who makes a couple of plays every week at uh, wideout. So Chapin not totally bereft of weapons. And Joe, once again, Joey Panisi on the call there. Irvin versus Chapin, another fun one. Anthony and Cathedral, both teams 2-1 and one overall. Brandon Cohn will be on the call for that game. Once again, Anthony and Cathedral. And then a fun one down at Riverfront Stadium. The Riverside Rangers at 3-0, and hosting the Horizon Scorpions. Riverside, a chance to go 4-0 and for the first time since the Tom Work era. Yeah, it's been a pretty easy schedule, but they did have an impressive uh, victory a week ago against uh, Esleta. 50-something 50, 50 to 30-something. As I said, there was a couple of fumble returns in that one. Alfredo Segala brought one back, 97 yards. And uh, Rudy Valenzuela had a, had a scoop and score as well. So that skews the score a little bit. I think actually a little bit closer those two teams uh, were to each other, Riverside and Esleta. But, uh, you know, that's a big win for, us, uh, for Riverside. The other two wins, you know, not that impressive. So this is not the match uh, mismatch that it may appear to be. Horizon, of course, has Ernie Garcia. Remember, he hit Bowie for 432 yards and seven touchdowns in week two. They have more than a puncher's chance in this one. And once again, Riverside hosting Horizon. That kickoff right now at Riverfront Stadium. We'll have a report from Joe Rodriguez in just a little bit. Another game over at the Student Activities Complex. El Dorado hosting Clint. El Dorado looking for their first win of the season, while the Clint Lions are 2-1. and one. Also, another action, Bowie is at Parkland. Both teams looking for their first victory of the year. Uh, J.D. Sursley will be on the call for that game. Again, Bowie is 0-3, while Parkland is 0-3. Parkland, a very tough three-game schedule to open the season. Other games we have in action. The Burgess Mustangs at the Hanks Knights at Excalibur Stadium. Should be a fun one. Bel Air looking to improve to 2-2, 500. They travel down to San Elizario. Mountain View is at Hatch Valley. Ira Ann is at Torneo. And once again, Pecos and Fabens, this game likely just to halftime. halftime. Pecos is up 31-6 to six at last check late in the second quarter. And another big one at the Field of Dreams. The Las Cruces Bulldogs taking on the Mayfield Trojans. This game usually played at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Instead, Mayfield goes moves down a district. They decide to move this to the Field of Dreams, a capacity crowd of 10,000 on hand. Unlike the usual 22,000 at Aggie Memorial Stadium, Las Cruces has won five straight in this rivalry. Been a little lopsided over the years, but still a really fun rivalry. Not only just in our community, but in the country, one of the top rivalries in the country. And based on what these teams used to be, I mean, it used to be the top two teams in New Mexico going at each other. You know, things have changed. Uh, the Rio Rancho Clevelands of the world have, you know, introduced themselves and and uh, Cruces and Mayfield taking a little bit, a little step back. But with all the history that they have, you know, it's it's still a big deal no matter when these two get together, no matter what their records are. And another land of enchantment action, Oregon Mountain, formerly known as Oñate High School and Centennial both play on Saturday. And that's your slate of games tonight. So once again, we'll have much more on Football Friday Night, a report next from all of our reporters sideline right now. You're listening to 600 ESPN El Paso Football Friday Night. You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Let's go back to Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. Thank you very much, Sal. Welcome back to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. We have some scores all around the city already. Early on at Riverfront Stadium, 6.36 to go in the first. Riverside up on Horizon, 7 nothing, And this should be a fun shootout over the sack. 7-6, to six, Clint over El Dorado in the first. Steve Escajeda on the call on that one. 7-6, to six, Clint over El Dorado so far early on in that one. Another action, Burgess leads Hanks, 6 nothing in the first. Also, Bel Air 
over San Elizario, 7-0 in the first quarter. Mayfield Trojans strike first against their rivals, the Bulldogs, at the Field of Dreams. Trojans lead Las Cruces High, 7-0 early in the first. And now to our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Here there's some live action over at Loewenberg Stadium between Del Valle and Canetillo for our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. And now we join Alex Nicholas for an update. Alex, take it away. 250 and running left here in the opening quarter, and Canotillo on the board. It was LJ Martin taking a handoff off the right side, untouched, 58 yards for the score off the right side. That was a three play, uh, 85 yard by 85 yard drive by Canotillo. The previous two plays were set up by long runs by quarterback Devin Granados, and then the long touchdown run for LJ Martin, his fourth of the season. 237 left here in the opening quarter. Canotillo seven, Del Valle nothing. All right, Alex. So L.J. Martin strikes first in the Canateo Eagles flying by the Delvai Conquistadors early on in this one. Again, early on, but seems to be flying fast, too, already close to the end of the first quarter. Now let's head out to Silver Fox Stadium in Jefferson High School and join Coach Jaime Chavez for an update on the Silver Foxes hosting the Isleta Indians. Coach. We've got 704 left in the first quarter. It is Jefferson 8, and it's led a zero. Nathan Angana, the Jefferson quarterback, he had a one yard touchdown run, and the two point conversion was good. Angana with a, a, a pass to uh, Roman Gomez, and that one capped in an 11 play, 73 yard drive that took five and a half minutes off the clock. And uh, Angana had uh, 22 yards and, and three carries on that drive along with Arturo Rubio running strong early for Jefferson five carries 29 yards and that one yard touchdown run that's the seventh rushing touchdown for the Jeff quarterback Nathan Angala thus far this season so we have a uh, 644 left in the first quarter and his letter is driving but Jefferson has the lead it's Jefferson eight and his letter zero all right, Coach, thank you very much. Wow, an 11-play, 70-plus-yard drive for the Jefferson Silver Foxes to open up the game. That shows that they're coming. And now, as Coach just said, is led a driving to counter. So we'll see how that one goes. Let's head out to Joey Panisi. The Irvin Rockets are 2-1, and one, taking on the Chapin Huskies. Let's get an update from Joey. Joey, take it away. Yes, from McKee Stadium with 2 minutes and 50 seconds, 56 seconds left in the first quarter. It's the Chapin Huskies 7 and the Urban Rocket zero. Uh, first possession for uh, Chapin, it was all Mason Standifer. Uh, he scored from six yards out. He was five for five in the air for 49 yards. And they rushed for 61 yards on 11 plays. Urban just dodged a bullet as after their first punt, Chapin ran it back 86 yards, but it was called back. So Urban, after talking with Coach uh, Joe Urias, uh, they have deep respect for Chapin, even though Chapin's missing their star running back, Jacob Williamson. He has a stress fracture in his lower leg, and they hope to get him back before the end of the year. Uh, Urias is bragging on his quarterback, John Knutson, 6'2", 200-pounder. Get this, he scored 13 of Irvin's 15 touchdowns. Uh, he's passed 54 times for 849 yards. And he's got a quarterback rating of 115. So, back to you guys with 256 left in the first quarter. It's homecoming night for Chapin. And Chapin leads Irvin 7-0. to zero. Chapin making Austin's R.E. McKee Stadium their home field tonight. Looking good. Already up 7-0 over their Northeast rivals, the Irvin Rockets. Another fun game between Cathedral and Anthony, both teams 2-1. and one. Let's get the call from the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, with an update on Cathedral and Anthony. Brandon, take it away. 3-18 left here, first quarter. Cathedral with a 7 to nothing lead over Anthony. Anthony receives the opening kickoff. They drive it all the way to Cathedral 35, utilizing workhorse running back Ray Hernandez, but then Hernandez fumbles at the 8-20 mark of the first, recovered by Cathedral's defensive end Juan Adiano. Then at the 5.48 mark of the first, a little trickery from Cathedral on their first possession as they do a little razzle-dazzle fake punt on a fourth and ten. It's a 15-yard completion to the Anthony 42, but it's called back because of the Cathedral blunder. Then they go for it uh, on a fourth and ten. Again, they do not convert, but Anthony ends up committing the penalty 
giving the Irish the automatic first down. Two plays later, Cathedral running back Rafa Ramirez, a monstrous 44-yard touchdown run at the 432 mark to give Cathedral the 7 and nothing lead. Although Anthony now driving in Cathedral territory, thanks to a, be- thanks to a beautiful 25-yard pass from Angel Solis there, QB to Diego Uscata. We have 225 remaining opening quarter here at Burgess Mustang Stadium. Cantillo, excuse me, Cathedral up 7 and nothing over Anthony. All right, Iceman. Brandon Cohn, thank you very much. Paul, I'm sensing a, I'm sensing something here. A lot of opening drive touchdowns so far. One by Jefferson, one by Chapin, and now Cathedral. A lot of teams starting this week off hot. And Cathedral's just going to get hotter, Chris. Remember, this is a homecoming night out of Burgess Mustang Stadium. In fact, uh, I think the... 50th anniversary crowd is in there, although thanks to COVID, it is now their 51st <laughs> annual. And I think our uh, our own uh, friend of the show, Ray Adalto, a big part of that, I think uh, this is 51 for him as well. And he's hanging at Burgess to celebrate uh, with his fighting Irish buddies. Absolutely. Way to go, Ray. That might be on the wife's there. side. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's, speaking of opening drive touchdowns, let's head out to Riverfront Stadium. I believe the home team has one out there. And let's join Joe Rodriguez with an update as Riverside hosting Horizon. Joe, take it away. Thank you very much. End of the first quarter, and it is Riverside leading the Houston Scorpions by the score of 14-0. to Two possessions for the Horizon Scorpions lead to two turnovers and two touchdowns in favor of the Riverside Rangers. A three-yard touchdown run by Rudy Valenzuela and a four-yard touchdown pass by uh, Angel Munoz to Dominique Coronel. Both of those possessions for the Riverside Rangers started at the 40, uh, excuse me, at the 44 uh, yard line of Horizon and the 40, 40 yard line of Horizon. So not a whole lot of, uh, you know, advancement that the Riverside Rangers had need to do and they just moved into red zone again for the third time tonight as the first play at the first play of the second quarter uh pretty much it's been all riverside rangers so far without their star player jose guardado uh not in the lineup tonight he is on the sideline in his jersey but he does not need any action tonight head coach gary recorder told me that uh before the game so i'm going to go ahead and send it back to you in the studio with 11:30 to go in the second quarter a fast moving game out here in riverfront stadium and it is all the Riverside Rangers leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 14-0. to zero. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Wow, Riverside Rangers not missing Jose Guardado so much so far tonight. Early on leading that 14 nothing over the Horizon Scorpions. Jose Guardado, get this, everybody, he is fifth in the state in rushing. So uh, a big piece of this Riverside offense, but not in the lineup tonight. And Riverside can put up points, even though we're talking about Horizon. And Paolo Melendez has in Horizon playing very tough. Riverside can really put up a lot of points. Yeah, you would think they might have to in a game like this one, but uh, so far so good. Uh, the defense pitching a, pitching a shutout, uh, of course, early first quarter. All right. Speaking of first quarter, let's now the student activities complex. The Clint Lions taking on the El Dorado Aztecs. Let's head out to Steve Escajeda with the call at the sack. Steve, take it away. We've got 4.06 to go in the opening quarter, and the El Dorado Aztecs are out in front of the Clint Lions 13-7. to Didn't look that way early. Uh, El Dorado got the ball first on their very first play from scrimmage. Uh, quarterback Richard Portillo uh, throwing an interception to cleanse uh, Matt Rincon at the El Dorado 35-yard line. Four plays later, Clint quarterback Isaiah Gonzalez running it, running it in from 20 yards out to give Clint the early 7-0 lead. Uh, since then, I'll tell you what, uh, that running back for El Dorado, Isaiah Rudison, a couple of 45-yard touchdown runs has put El Dorado, El Dorado up 13-7. to And uh, Clint came into the ballgame as a team that uh, loves to run the football, uh, in fact, averaging about 430 yards per game on the ground this year. Well, tonight so far, it's El Dorado. They've already in the, well, we've got still three minutes and, and change to go in the first quarter. They've got 146 yards on the ground already. 115 of those are coming uh, on Isaiah Rudison on his five carries and a couple of touchdowns. So with 3.52 to go in the first quarter here at the sack. It's El Dorado 13, Clint 7. 
All right, Steve, thank you very much. El Dorado still looking for their first victory of the season. El Dorado 0-3 in the season, taking on 2-1 Clint. And Bo, this just in from our Game of the Week. Alex Nicholas reports that L.J. Martin added again. 77-yard touchdown run. Kenya Teo out on top of mighty Del Valle, 14 to nothing. Wow, I think wow. that's a shocker so far. L.J. Martin already with 130 yard, 35 yards rushing in the first quarter as Kenny Teo up 14-0 over the Divine Conquistadors in our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Wow. Okay, hey, let's head out to Parkland's Matador Stadium. The Parkland Matadors and the Bowie Bears still looking for their first victories of the season. Let's catch up with J.D. Sursley for an update. J.D., take it away. 405 left in the first quarter. Matadors up 20-0 to zero over Bowie. A Marco Bannon 70-yard touchdown to start the game with a 48-yard Touchdown receiving reception by Demarion Crest. One-handed catch. It was phenomenal. And then um, Matador is driving again with a one-yard touchdown by Isaiah Beasley. Matador is definitely having their way right now with the missed field goal. It is 20 to 20-0, 358 left in the game, or in the first quarter. J.D., thank you very much. Wow. I, maybe that's not a shocker, but Parkland Matadors had a very, very tough start to the season. You know, a Northeast rivalry game with the Andrus Eagles that they lost. And then, uh, boy, what a what a start to the season. Probably arguably the toughest schedule. And they started this game tonight red hot, up 20 to nothing. Yeah, and you mentioned the Andrus game. The other two losses, oh, yeah, they were to 6A teams, including the Eastwood Troopers Week 1, who they led through three quarters so uh you know this might be as good a parkland team as we've seen in recent years but there's still plenty good for uh, that district 15a the way candy teal's playing tonight that parkland candy teal game is going to be a fun one absolutely an update from riverfront stadium riverside rangers do it again already just at the start of the second quarter riverside already up 21 nothing after a big 10-yard r- touchdown run from the Riverside Rangers. Yeah, Angel Munoz, the quarterback, uh, from 7 out to put him up 21 zip. Wow, so there you go. Riverside Rangers uh, moving up there. Let's get an update from Las Cruces and uh, and Mayfield up at the Field of Dreams. Again, this game not taking place at the Aggie Memorial Stadium. Instead, this one moves to a capacity crowd, 10,000 at the Field of Dreams. This game tied at 7. Crucis has tied it up after Mayfield struck first, so tied at seven in the second quarter. Mayfield and Crucis nodded at seven. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll have more scores from you, more reports from all of our reporters all around the borderland. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Let's go back to Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. Thank you, Sal. Welcome back to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. Our game of the week, Del Valle Canatillo. The Eagles lead the Del Valle Conquistadors 14-0 in the first quarter. This, our game of the week, brought to you by Cisco Movers. We'd like to thank our other sponsors, Longhorn Distributing, El Paso Association of Builders, the Greater El Paso Football Showcase, Taco Avocat, and then Union Draft House, our home to our post-show party, Union Draft House on Sunland Park. Other scores around the area. Jefferson Silver Foxes lead the Isleta Indians 14-0. The Chapin Huskies lead the Irvin Rockets in a battle of the Northeast 14-0. Anthony and Cathedral all tied up at 7. The Riverside Rangers pouring it on up 21-0 over the Horizon Scorpions in the second quarter. El Dorado leads Clint at the end of the first quarter, 13-7. Also, the last check, Parkland up on Bowie, 20-0. The Burgess Mustangs and Hanks Knights tied at 6. That's going to be a wild one tonight. Bel Air leads San Elizario, 7-0. Crucis and Mayfield at the end of the first quarter. This game tied at 7. Also, uh, at last check, Pecos laid, led Febins, Fabens, 31 to 6, that nearing halftime. And Bo from uh, Hatch Valley, the green chili capital of the United States. Ooh. At least that's what they claim. Well, not so hot for the home team. Uh, Mountain View visiting up 7 to zip 
on Hatch Valley. That one, of course, still early. All right, Paul, red or green? Yeah, green. I'm a green guy. Oh, green guy. Mm. Green. Nothing like green chilies. I, I got to say, I love red. Red chilies and pasta. Green chilies on about everything else. <laughs> okay. All right, that's me. That's just me again. Hey, let's head out to our Cisco Movers Game of the Week and join Alex Nicholas for an update. This has really been the LJ Martin Show. Let's see if that continues. Let's join Alex Nicholas at Julius and Irene Lowenberg Stadium. Alex, take it away. 634 left until halftime. Cano Tio leading Del Valle 14 nothing. It is the LJ Martin show, but we got to show love to this Cano Tio defense. As Paul mentioned, that 77-yard run by uh, LJ Martin was actually set up by a big stop by the Cano Tio defense. Del Valle with their longest drive of the game, driving inside the 30-yard line, a fourth down and short. Del Valle tried to quick snap it with a, a quarterback sneak by Jesse Ramos. That was stuff. Next play, LJ Martin goes 77 yards to the house. For his second touchdown of the night, I have L.J. Martin with nine carries, 148 yards, and those two touchdowns. How about that kind of field defense just allowing 3.3 yards per play? Got a shout-out linebacker, Jesus Carrillo, the junior, getting it done, making plays, and flying around here on the blue turf. 6.20 and running left until halftime. Kind of field, 14, Del Valle, nothing. All right, Alex, thank you very much. Still a surprise out there at Lowenberg Stadium. Canateo Eagles lead the Divine Conquistadors 14-0. Hey, at last check, it was 14-0. Jeff over his letter. Let's join Coach Jaime Chavez with an update from Jefferson Silver Fox Stadium. Coach, take it away. 15 seconds left in the first quarter. It is all Jefferson. Jefferson, 21, Isleta, 0. And it's the, the Nathan Alcala show, the quarterback. Uh, he's coming on strong tonight for the Silver Foxes. He's fired two touchdown passes. He just threw a 52-yard touchdown pass to uh, Nate, Nate Rivas, and the extra point was good. He also has an 18-yard touchdown pass to Roman Gomez and a one-yard touchdown run. From uh, Jefferson's first drive, Alcala, big numbers tonight thus far. He's 5 of 7, 145 yards passing, two touchdowns. He's got the five carries, 36 yards rushing. And Arturo Rubio for Jefferson, five carries, 29 yards rushing. And just before Alcala threw that 52-yard touchdown pass, he picked off uh, his starter quarterback, uh, Damien Contreras. And then Alcala throws that 52-yard touchdown pass to Nick Rivas. So we've got seven seconds left in the first quarter. It is all Jefferson tonight. Jefferson, 21, and he's let nothing. All right, Coach. We're at Canateo. It's the L.J. Martin Show. Over at Silver Fox Stadium, it's the Nathan Alcala Show. For the Jefferson Silver Foxes, up 21 nothing over the Isleta Indians. Now remember, Isleta is no pushover coming into this game at 2-1 and one overall. But Jefferson, looking solid so far, up 21 nothing. I was going to say, you said Isleta no pushover, but it, it looks like they've fallen and, and they can't get up. This one's uh, all Jefferson, and Jefferson is just rolling. You talk about a team that, that uh, just as the confidence builds, I think that Bel Air win a, a week ago, 33-14, was just huge for this team. And, you know, you got to wonder if they're going to just roll right into district with this opening uh, the season with a Burgess team that's, uh, last we checked, tied with Hanks at 6-all. All right, another big battle of Northeast El Paso between the Irvin Rockets and the Chapin Huskies. I'd say both of these teams need a victory tonight, especially for bragging rights up in Northeast El Paso. Let's join Joey Panisi for an update between Irvin and Chapin at Austin's R.E. McKee Stadium. Joey, take it away. With seven minutes left in the second quarter from McKee Stadium, it's now the Chapin Huskies 14, the Urban Rockets 0. It's been all Chapin tonight. I know Joe Urias from Urban must be pretty upset. They've only mustered one first down. Uh, last touchdown, the Huskies had their way. They marched 78 yards on nine plays. And then finally, Mason Standifer, the Chapin quarterback, connected with Anthony Rivera for a 16-yard TD strike. Um, Joe Urias, uh, Irvin coach, was worried that uh, the team depended too much on the quarterback, so he was going to run to a two-back offense to mix things up, and Chapin is just keying on this boy. One highlight for Knutson that I saw is he broke about seven tackles last play and rushed 11 yards on it, and then he was scrambling and threw a 55-yard pass across his body, and it was a pass interference. So, anyway... Back to you with seven minutes and one second left from the Key Stadium. Homecoming night for the Huskies, and they're having their way. It's the Huskies 14, Urban Rockets 0. 
All right, Joey, thank you very much. Once again, 14 nothing Chapin over Irvin early on in this one. Also scoring 14 so far, the Burgess Hanks. Burgess leads Hanks 14-6 to this early on in the second quarter. At last check, we we're all tied at 7 at Burgess Mustang Stadium between Anthony and Cathedral. Let's join the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, for an update on this exciting one. Brandon. 8.04 left here in the opening half. And right now it's 13 to 7, Anthony over Cathedral. At the 127 mark of the first, Anthony gets on the board as their running back, Raymond Hernandez, scores on the two yard TD run, making it 7 to 7. Then at 11.18 of the second, the Anthony quarterback, Angel Solis, finds his wideout, Anthony Carminas, who scores a 61 yard catch and run TD. The PAT is blocked, though, making the score, Anthony, 13 to 7 over Cathedral. And uh, as I'm speaking now, Anthony trying to get in the end zone right now. They're down to the one-yard line at the 731 mark here of the second quarter. We'll see if they weren't able to get in as Raymond Hernandez was just out shy. 723 remaining here, opening half. And Anthony trying to go up again by a wider margin, but up 13-7 to over Cathedral on their homecoming evening. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. A little bit of a surprise there in Cathedral's homecoming night at Mustang Stadium, but looks like the Anthony uh, Wildcats are set to drive, maybe put up another another score over the Cathedral Fighting Irish. We'll keep you updated there. Thank you very much, Brandon. Let's head out to an exciting one at Riverfront Stadium. I hear there's more fireworks down, uh, down in the lower valley between the Horizon Scorpions and the Riverside Rangers. Let's join Joe Rodriguez with an update. Joe. 54 left in the second quarter and it is Riverside leading the Horizon Scorpions by a score of 21 to 7. Uh, Riverside got on the board once more shortly after my first report. A three play 68 yard drive that ended in the seven yard touchdown run by a uh, quarterback uh, Angel Munoz for his first rushing touchdown of the night. That was at the 11 minute mark in the second quarter. On the ensuing possession Horizon finally got on the board 75 yard drive over nine plays and the eight yard touchdown run by running back Ernie Garcia bringing us to where we're at right now. The Riverside Rangers are in the red zone. Second and eight to go from the Horizon for, uh, 16 yard line with 437 to go. It is Riverside leading Horizon by the score of 21 to 7. All right, a lot of points down there already. Four touchdowns at Riverfront Stadium in just the first half. We'll keep you updated. Thank you very much, Joe. Hey, an exciting one between Clint and El Dorado over this at the Student Activities Complex. Clint trailing El Dorado at last check, thirteen to seven. Let's join Steve Escajeda with an update. Steve, we've got eleven forty-eight and counting here in the second quarter, and uh, El Dorado now leading Clint by the score of twenty to thirteen. Uh, when we last let you, El Dorado was up 13-7. to A couple of minutes after that, they were back to punt uh, near their own end zone. Uh, the snap sailed over the punter's head. Uh, in fact, he was almost uh, tackled uh, for a safety, got away, threw an incomplete pass, which meant that Clint took over on the El Dorado 17-yard line. A couple of plays after that, uh, Clint tied the score at 13 after uh, Miguel Holguin ran it in from nine yards out, and uh, that was near the end of the uh, first quarter. But I'll tell you what, it, it took them. It took El Dorado 20 seconds to answer. That guy, Isaiah Rudison, a 66-yard run for a score. Uh, that gives him three scores on the night. Uh, touchdown runs of 45, 45, and 66. So far in that first quarter, Rudison, six carries, 181 yards, and three touchdowns. So we just started the second quarter, 10.45 to go before halftime. It is El Dorado on top of Clint, twenty to thirteen. And and Bo, you got to remember, this is not your uh, father's uh, Clint Lions football team. This is a team that graduated their, their entire offensive backfield from a year ago. We always talk about how many skilled players are coming back. Well, for the Clint Lions, there aren't any. Your quarterback is gone. Your fullback is gone. Your two halfbacks are gone. Your wide receiver. Who cares? You don't throw the football. You don't need a wide receiver. So everyone who's important to that Clint offense has uh, disappeared. In fact, uh, a big chunk of the team, of course, gone to graduation. Uh, COVID 2020 was was their swan song out the door. So this is a team that's definitely rebuilding. So I, I, I don't think especially this is a big surprise. Will Clint still uh, compete for the, four, uh, for the 4A title? Yeah, of course, that's going to be a fun one with Clint, Riverside, and we've got a Mountain View team that's now up 
14 zip uh, Hansel Hernandez couple of touchdowns one a 70 yarder just caught a touchdown pass as as they lead in uh, where are they Hatch Valley that's right. Mountain View is at Hatch Valley. So like you said, up 14 nothing. Mountain View over Hatch Valley. And Clint, Clint might have lost a lot of players, but you know they still have? Roseville Martinez, their head coach. I believe this is his 17th year down at Clint High School. Second in longevity to just uh, one guy, Scott Brooks out of Canyon Tio. He's, I think he's uh, within a couple of years of him. Absolutely. Uh, another check at scores around the area. Burgess leads Hank for. Hanks 14 to 6, Bel Air up on Sanella Rosario 7 nothing in Las Cruces and Mayfield tied up at 7 up at the Field of Dreams. Hey, at last check Parkland was up 20 to nothing over the Bowie Bears, both teams looking for their first victory of the season. Let's join JD Sursley at Matador Stadium for an update. JD Just the start of the second quarter, Matador's 34 Bowie 0. Um, Isaiah Beasley had a great 32-yard run, followed up by the next possession, a 50-yard run by Anthony Carrillo. Um, Bowie's just lucky right now that Matadors have gifted them some banana peels on the floor with the flags because this should be 50 to zero right now. Very, very uh, disappointing by Bowie right now. 11.54 left, uh, left in the second quarter, 34-0. All right, J.D., thank you very much. We knew this would be a tough one. Bowie is sort of limping into this game. Parkland upset at being 0-3 with one of the most challenging schedules to start the season. Uh, Parkland Matadors looking like the real deal tonight, up 34 nothing. Yeah, I think this is what, is what we're going to see once uh, district starts as well. Uh, again, this is going to be a fun district. Uh, there, I don't know that there are a lot of great teams in this town this year, but there are a lot of teams that are close to each other. And uh, Parkland, of course, is going to rise, but it looks like Canyon Teo has risen uh, to meet the challenge. And, uh, you know, they could definitely have a real shot at the Parkland Matadors for the first time in a few years. Remember, Parkland, uh, three-time champs in uh, now 1-5A. And, oh, by the way, another score out there. I don't know if we have this one. Bel Air San Eli, again, no surprise. Overmatched, I'm sure Bel Air sitting a lot of people, uh, uh, but uh, they are up 28 to nothing on uh, San Elizario. And that's another district that's going to be interesting. Uh, San Eli and Fabens fighting maybe for uh, last place. We haven't played a game yet, and I'm already telling you he's fighting for last place. Come on now. But San Eli and Fabens, uh, that's going to be a game for the probably fourth and final playoff spot in uh, that district as well. So there's, there's going to be a lot of fun contests uh, you know, just throughout the season with uh, you know, uh, big consequences, which I guess there always are. Remember, just five teams in the district, four of them make the playoffs. So it should be a fun one, a fun battle in 1-4-8 between Riverside, Clint, Fabin, Sanelli, and Mountain View. Okay, remember, hey, you want a new spot to try? How about experience Taco Avocat for a feel-good fast food? Family packs available for the big game? Or stop by their drive through and grab Taco Avocat to go. Wear your school colors and receive 10% off at Taco Avocat. Dine in at 2114 North Zaragoza or order online at Taco Avocat. Dot com. Still to come, our two-minute drill right here on Football Friday Night. All next with the reporters from all around the borderland. You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Cisco Movers, the local experts for moving across El Paso. Need to move your college student into their new apartment? How about moving an entire family from point A to point B? Too busy to plan and move on your own? Cisco Movers... You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Let's go back to Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. Welcome back to Football Friday Night alongside Sal Montez and Paul McKinnon. I'm Bo Bagley. Remember our out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by Longhorn Distributing, the only hot seat dealer in West Texas and Southern New Mexico, your source for cleaning equipment, service, and supplies. Longhorn Distributing, 55th, 55, 16 East Paisano Drive in El Paso. Let's get you to some score updates around El Paso. The Burgess Mustangs lead the Hanks Knights 21 to 6 in the second quarter. Mountain View leads Hatch Valley 14 nothing in the second quarter. And Bel Air up big over San Eli in the second 28 nothing. Up at the Field of Dreams in Las Cruces. The Bulldogs lead the Trojans 14-7 this in the second quarter. Now time for our two-minute drill. Let's go out to our Cisco Movers Game of the Week and join Alex Nicholas at Delvay Canatillo. Alex. Ten seconds left until halftime. Canatillo 14, Delvay nothing. Canatillo tried a fake punt here with two seconds left. So Canatillo will, or Delvay will have one chance for a Hail Mary right before the half. 
as the Canotillo 47 yard line. Two seconds left until halftime. Canotillo 14, Del Valle nothing. All right, just before half, we'll await your halftime report in just a little bit after the next break. Thank you very much, Alex. Let's head out to Jefferson Silver Fox Stadium and join Jaime Chavez for an update on Isleta Jeff. Coach. 603 left in the half. It's uh, Jefferson 21, Isleta 7, Jefferson quarterback Nathan Ancala. A pair of touchdown passes, a 52-yard touchdown pass to Nate Rivas and an 18-yard touchdown pass to Roman Gomez. And then Isleta gets on the board, and quarterback Damien Contreras fires a 48-yard touchdown pass to Isaiah Furano. 5.31 left in the half. The Jefferson 21, Isleta 7. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Exciting game out there at Silver Fox Stadium. Let's head out to another one in the Battle of the Northeast between Irvin and Chapin and join Joey Panisi for an update from McKee Stadium. Joey, take it away. Yes, with 2.16 left in the second quarter, it's now the Chapin Huskies 21. The Urban Rocket zero. Uh, Urban's very frustrated. It's been all Chapin on both sides of the ball. Uh, thus far, it's been the Mason Standifer show. He just completed another touchdown, 39 yarder to Timothy Pastron. So with 216 left, 21 Chapin, zero Urban. All right, Joey, thank you very much. Appreciate the call there. Two minutes to go at McKee Stadium at Austin High School. Let's head out to Burgess Mustang Stadium and join Brandon Cohn for the call between the Anthony Wildcats and the Cathedral Fighting Irish. Brandon. 2.22 left here, opening half, and it's 19-7, to Anthony over Cathedral. At the 6.53 mark here of the second, Anthony running back Raymond Hernandez scores his second touchdown of the first half. This time it's a two-yard TD PAT was no good, making the score 19-7 to over Cathedral. This is a great game, though, because Cathedral now in scoring position with 214 and counting here. They are currently at the Anthony 25-yard line. 209 left here at Burgess Mustang Stadium on Cathedral's homecoming night. 19-7 to Cathedral over, uh, pardon me, Anthony over Cathedral. All right, Iceman, thank you very much. Exciting one. We'll see how the Cathedral Fighting Irish do just before halftime. An exciting one down at Riverfront Stadium. Seems like every time we check in with Joe, there's about two or three touchdowns. Let's get another update from Riverfront between Horizon and Riverside. Joe, take it away. End of the second quarter, end of the first half out here at Riverfront Stadium, and it is the Riverside Rangers leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 24-7. to I don't have any more touchdowns to report, but I do have a 23-yard field goal that was good by Riverside kicker Jonathan Reyes at the 131 mark left in the second quarter. Uh, from there on, on the ensuing possession, Riverside started moving the ball rather nicely, uh, but unfortunately ran out of time, which brings us to where we're at at halftime uh, with a deficit by the Riverside Rangers uh, of 17 points. They are still in this, especially the way they have moved the ball in their last two possessions. So a little bit of hope here for the visiting Horizon Scorpions. We're going to go ahead and send it back to you all in the studio. Uh, going to tally up some halftime stats and get back with you. So right now we're at halftime. We're about 17 minutes away until we start the third quarter, and it is the Riverside Rangers leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 24-7. to Okay, Joe, thank you very much. 24 to 7, Riverside over Horizon and Riverside without a big key part of their offense. Joe will have that halftime report for you in just a little bit. Let's head out to Steve Escajeda at the sack and join Clint in El Dorado in this game. Let's see where they are ended up right now. Steve, take it away. We've got two minutes and 13 seconds before the half here at the sack, and El Dorado continues to lead Clint by the score of 20 to 13. Big guy tonight for uh, El Dorado, Isaiah Rudson. Three big touchdown runs, seven carries, 183 yards on the night. And again, like we said, those three scores. Uh, right now, Clint has the ball on the uh, El Dorado 39 yard line, looking at a fourth down and uh, 14. Uh, let's see if they have uh, a timeout right now. We'll see if they're going to go for it, see if they can tie things up here by halftime. 2.13 to go. It's El Dorado 20, Clint 13. All right, Steve, thank you very much. As all of these games inching towards halftime, we'll have our halftime reports in just a moment. And a big surge in the first half from the Parkland Matadors. Let's see how this one is going. Let's join J.D. Sursley at Matador Stadium between Bowie and Parkland. J.D. 
550 left in the second quarter, 34-0. Matadors were about to score, but they decided to do a fake field goal, which failed miserably. Uh, so Bowie has the ball with 550 left, 34-0 left in the second quarter. JD, thank you very much. So no update there from uh, from Parkland. They're still at the same score, thirty four nothing. The Parkland Matadors over the Bowie Bears in the second quarter. Other scores update: twenty one to six Burgess over Hanks, twenty eight nothing Bel Air over San Eli. At last check, Crucis and Mayfield fourteen to seven. Crucis leading Mayfield. Uh, Fabens make it a bit of a comeback. Uh, second half rolled around. Of course, it was 31-6 at the half. Now they've closed to within 31-19 to of Pecos. Wow. So, uh, uh, no, I was going to say cats, I guess, have nine lives. So, Wildcats this season have probably blown about four of them. But they're, they're still alive in this one. That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Paul. Hey, just went to halftime. End of the first half. Mayfield and Las Cruces tied at 14. So a stadium capacity crowd at the Field of Dreams, 10,000 strong for that one. Seen a good game so far. So tied at 14 between longtime rivals Las Cruces and Mayfield. So that does it for our two-minute drill brought to you by the El Paso Association of Builders. Real high school football action is brought to you by Real Texas Builders. Ask your home builder if they're members of the El Paso Association of Builders. The home of Real Texas Builders, El Paso Builders, Dot com. This is Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. Much more action to come. You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Let's go back to Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. Thank you, Sal. Welcome back to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. In our Cisco Movers Game of the Week, at halftime, Canateo Eagles lead Delvai 14 0. And other action, most of these games at halftime or near halftime, Jefferson leads Isleta 21 7. Chapin all over Irvin 21 0. Anthony over Cathedral 19 7. Riverside over Horizon 24 7. And El Dorado and Clint. Clint cutting the El Dorado lead. It's now El Dorado 20 19, a one point lead over the Clint Lions. Yeah, Bo. Isaiah Gonzalez, the quarterback, a 39-yard touchdown run. And what they do? Miss the extra point. Oh. Going to halftime, probably a, a point down. And Parkland all over Bowie in this one in the first half. 34 nothing Parkland over Bowie. And other action, Burgess leads Hanks 28-6 to in the second quarter. Also in the second quarter, Bel Air all over San Elizario, 35 nothing At halftime, Las Cruces and Mayfield tied at 14. Also at half, Mountain View leads Hatch Valley 20 to nothing. And in the third quarter, Fabens cutting into that Pecos lead. Pecos now leads by 12, 31-19 over the Fabens Wildcats. Now time for our Longhorn Distributing out-of-town scoreboard. Paul. Yeah, some inter- interesting scores out there, Bo Bagley. Uh, let's start with Midland Legacy, of course, formerly Midland Lee. 29 to nothing all over Arlington Bowie as uh, Lee or Legacy or whatever they are. Looks to move to 3-1. and one. Are they Bowie. still the Rebels? They're still the Rebels. Okay. I don't get that part. Now, see if you're going to change to Legacy. I'm not sure you keep the Rebels part. But anyway, that's a great question, Bo Bagley. You're always thinking. <laughs> always thinking. Elsewhere, Amarillo Tascos is still red hot off that, off that big Permian win, win a week ago. Now who they taking care of? It? Well, San Angelo Central. By the time these guys are done, they might be the 2-6-A champions, even though they're not in 2-6-A anymore. 32-14 to Tascos up on Central. Of course, these all third-quarter scores. Elsewhere, Amarillo High, another four, former 6-A dealing with a – Current 6A, 21 to 7. They lead undefeated Friendship. Amarillo 2 and 1. Friendship 3 and 0. Elsewhere, another one, a surprise. This is a halftime score. Odessa High, not Odessa Permian, Odessa High, the Bronchos. A two point lead, 28 26 over Wichita Falls Ryder, uh, undefeated Ryder. Of course, Odessa 6A, Ryder a 5A, but still Ryder, a terrific 5A. You always see them in the regional finals, usually with uh, Lubbock Cooper. So uh, Odessa, maybe they're bringing it this year. 28-26, they lead Ryder. Thursday night game, Lubbock Coronado beat Midland 42-17 as both teams now 1-3. Elsewhere, Canyon High up on Caprock 14-13. 
two and one versus one and two. Lubbock Cooper uh, over Lubbock Monterey, 21-14, matchup of uh, two and one ball clubs. Now the Thursday nighter, Paladuro beat Borger 20 to 13. Paladuro undefeated now. Borger falls to one and three. Wichita Falls in a game of the winless. They lead Burke Burnett 28 to 7. That one headed to the fourth quarter. And Canyon Randall in a battle of two and ones up on Pampa. 28 to 7. Last score. Leveland all over Lubbock 40 to 7. And that, Bo Bagley, is your out of town scoreboard. Great job. Out of town scoreboard brought to you by Longhorn Distributing, the only hot seat dealer in West Texas and southern New Mexico. Your source for cleaning equipment, service, and supplies, Longhorn Distributing, 5516 East Paisano Drive in El Paso. Now time for our halftime reports brought to you by the El Paso Association of Builders. Let's head out to our Cisco Movers Game of the Week and join Alex Nicholas for the halftime report of Del Valle at Canateo. Alex. Halftime from Lowenberg Stadium in Canotillo, Texas. It's the Canotillo Eagles 14 and the Del Valle Conquistadores. Nothing here at the half. It has been all Canotillo in this opening half. The Eagles with 283 yards of total offense, 198 of those coming on the ground, 167 coming from L.J. Martin on 12 carries. He has touchdown runs of 58 and 77. Both were long touchdown drives that were definitely momentum-changing runs early on in this game. Quarterback Devin Granados has been steady. Four of seven, 85 yards. Tony Ayala, two catches, 45 yards. Actually fumbled uh, midway through the second quarter. It was a long a long touch, a long touch, pass that was looking like it was going to be a touchdown, but Ayala fumbled at the 10-yard line, re- recovered by Del Valle's Brandon Zayas. For Del Valle, it's really just been a struggle on offense. I have Del Valle with just five first downs, 91 total yards of offense. Christian Martinez, who came in as one of the city's top rushers, with over 408, or under 400, over 400 yards rushing, with just three yards on eight carries, got to shout out that front three, um, that odd man front that uh, Canofio is running with their ends. Alex Jordan, uh, Juan Delgado, and the nose guard Chris Solis. They are dropping their ends. They're bringing their ends. They're creating so much havoc up front. It's really confusing. This Del Valle uh, quarterback uh, Jesse Ramos is not getting a real feel of the of the pull on the uh, read option, and they've really, really stymied that one. Just 12 rushing yards for Del Valle in the first half. Second half, about five minutes away. Like I mentioned, Del Valle has won eight of the, line, eight of the last nine matchups for Carlos Dio, and that may be a little bit of edge that the Eagles are bringing here this evening. Five minutes away from the start of the second half, and it's Carlos Dio leading Del Valle 14 to nothing at halftime. And, and Bo, what I hear Alex saying is uh, the exact opposite of what I saw a week ago uh, versus America's Del Valle. Jesse Ramos right on the dot with all his throws, but his guys were wide, wide, wide open. You know, when he put it on the dot so they could run after catch and turn a, you know, a, a 12-yard pass into a 70-yard pass, but his guys were open. And what we're hearing tonight, can you deal, can you deal defense – and who coaches it better? We're talking defense than, than Scott Brooks out of Candy Teo. They went all the way to the Final Four. What was it, 2015? Somewhere around 24, there. 2014. 2014, yeah. thanks for that. They go all the way to the Final Four, and it was all on the defense. You know, not a lot on the offensive side of the football. Their defense carried them all the way there. And it's the same guys coaching the same defense, and they're doing a heck of a job tonight against a very good Devil Eye offense. Yeah, Scott Brooks has done a great job at retaining his coaches there at, at Kennedy High School, and that trademark defense is showing itself tonight as once again Del Valle trails Kennedy in our Cisco Movers Game of the Week at halftime, 14 0 Kennedy over Del Valle. Alex, thank you very much. Looking forward to that second half call. Let's head out to Jefferson Silver Fox Stadium, get an update from Jefferson and his letter from Coach Jaime Chavez. Coach. 48 seconds left in the half. It is now Jefferson 21. It's led a 14. It's led a quarterback, Damian Contreras, coming on strong in the second quarter. He's got a pair of touchdown passes, a 48-yard touchdown pass to Isaiah Jurado and a 42-yard touchdown pass to Andres Martinez. Some good numbers for uh, Contreras. He's uh, 6 of 8, 122 yards passing. Two touchdowns, but two interceptions. But the story of the night has been the Jefferson quarterback, Nathan Antella, two touchdown passes. He's got a 52-yard touchdown pass to Nate Rivas and an 18-yard touchdown pass to Roman Gomez. And Algala also has a one-yard touchdown run. Nine of 11 
206 yards passing and two touchdowns for the Jefferson senior quarterback. 46 seconds left at Silver Fox Stadium. It is Jefferson 21. He's led a 14. All right, Coach. Thank you very much. The Isleta Indians, we didn't think they'd be counted out in this one. Down 21 nothing early in this one, making a game of it, now down 21-14. And it's the air game. I mean, you know, maybe they just found something. A couple long touchdown, 40-plus yard touchdown passes. You heard uh, Gerardo and uh, Martinez, Andy Martinez. <laughs> Let, let's see how this carries over. Headed to halftime. Uh, maybe Isleta knows how to attack this uh, Jefferson defense, something nobody else has figured out over the season's first month. All right, let's head out to Ari McKee Stadium at Austin High School. The Irvin Rockets taking on the Chapin Huskies. This game should be at halftime. Let's Catch up with Joey Panisi for an update. Joey. Yes, we're at the half. McKee Stadium. The score is now the Japan Huskies 28, the Urban Rockets 0. Let me just start off with the statistics. I can't imagine how disappointed Coach Arias from Urban is. He, before the game, told me he really felt he had a good chance in this one. But it's been all Chapin. Uh, 90 yards rushing for Chapin, 194 passing. For 284 total yards, Irvin, 17 running, 52 passing, 69 total. Um, The numbers don't even tell it all. Basically, it's been quarterback Mason Standifer show from Irvin. Um, Let me give you some of his stats. Get this. He's 10 for 11 in the air for 194 yards and three touchdowns. He's also rushed for four yards, and he has a a 17-yard running score of his own. Uh, Chapin has an incredible receiver. I'm sure you've probably heard of him, Paul. Timothy Pastron, they call him Zeke. He's 6'3", 184 pounds, and he just caught a 50-yard bomb with four seconds left on the clock uh, to sum up the scoring for uh, Chapin uh, in the half. Let me give a little credit to the guys that don't get much. Kicker George Perez from uh, Chapin, he's 4 for 4 for PATs. But then, with a minute, 16 seconds left, he kicked the ball down to the one-yard line of Irvin's, and Irvin just couldn't get it out of there. And they finally punted it away from deep in the end zone. Chapin took over at the 50. Four seconds left, the bomb in the end zone. So it's been all Chapin. Let's see if Irvin can come to life in the second half. So we have 20 minutes left in the halftime show. So at the half, it's the Chapin Huskies, 28 the Urban Rockets, zero. All right, Joey, thank you very much. 28 nothing. the Chapin Huskies over the Urban Rockets in the Battle of Northeast. You know, there are a lot of bragging rights on the line at that one. So, Joey, thank you very much. At last check, it was 19-7, to Anthony over Cathedral, but Cathedral was driving just before halftime. Let's check in with uh, the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, for an update from Burgess High School. Brandon. It's halftime, Anthony 19-7 to over Cathedral. For Anthony, their quarterback, Angel Solis, 5 of 8, 132 yards, one touchdown there. Workhorse tonight, and uh, running back Raymond Hernandez, 15 carries for 62 yards. He has two touchdowns. Wide out Diego Escada, he has three receptions for 71 yards. Also wide out Anthony Kamara, it's a 61-yard touchdown reception. For Cathedral, their quarterback, Fernando Urete, 11 of 20, 120 yards. Running back Rafael Ramirez, seven carries, 41 yards, one touchdown. And their wideout, Ray Hernandez, big night, big first half, five receptions, 105 yards. It's Cathedral's homecoming here at Burgess Mustang Stadium. We're at the half, and it's uh, Anthony trying to spoil that homecoming night, 19 to 7 over Cathedral. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. Halftime right there. Cathedral struggling a little bit at this one at their homecoming against the Anthony Wildcats. But Anthony looking pretty good, putting up 19 in the first half there. Lead that. And other halftime scores are nearing halftime. Burgess leads the Hank Knights 35-6. to This just before halftime. Also, last check in the second quarter, 35 nothing Bel Air over Sanelli. Mountain View up 26 nothing at halftime over Hatch Valley. And Las Cruces and Mayfield tied at 14. For another check from Riverfront Stadium and a halftime report on the Riverside Rangers and Horizon Scorpions, let's join Joe Rodriguez with an update. Joe. Joe. 
Joe, this is Bo and Paul and Sal back at this at this uh, radio station. Are you there for a halftime update? I think he's there. It sure it sure sounds like he's there. I can hear the maybe it was a bathroom break or something. He that, left his phone on. That might have been Joe on the, on a PA. We should have left it on a little longer. It sounded like there was some excitement there. Thankfully, it wasn't Leslie Nielsen in like the Naked Gun where accident left his microphone on when he went to the bathroom. Uh oh. Thankfully, we wouldn't have that kind of an incident. Enrico Palazzo, right? <laughs> yeah, <there you laughs> that's go. one of the all time. <laughs> Gigs, there you go. Dad, whatever that okay, was. we'll get back to Joe Rodriguez in just a little bit. Let's head over to Steve Escajeda for Clint Lyons and the El Dorado Aztecs at the sack for a halftime update. Steve, take it away. Thanks a lot, guys. We're here at halftime at the sack, about 20 minutes to go uh, for the homecoming halftime show for El Dorado. And the Aztecs so far, happy crowds. They're leading Clint 20 to 19. Uh, Clint scored a touchdown at uh, 156 to go before the half. The quarterback, Isaiah Gonzalez, running it in from 39 yards, uh, again, to bring uh, Clint to it in one. He went for two on the extra point, and that was no good. So they're down at the half here, 20 to 19. Uh, basically, uh, guys, it's been run, run, run. We knew we'd get that from Clint, but uh, how about El Dorado? Neither team has completed a single pass tonight. At least El Dorado has tried one. They're 0 for 4. Clint hasn't even gone that way. Uh, individually, uh, for Clint, they are led by their quarterback, Isaiah Gonzalez, 5 carries, 68 yards on the ground, a couple of touchdowns. Uh, Miguel Holguin uh, chipped in 6 carries, 35 yards. For El Dorado, uh, Isaiah Rudison, uh, 7 carries on the night, 183 yards, 3 touchdowns. Uh, he had all of those, but one carry in the first quarter. He only carried it once for two yards in the second, but I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of him in the second half. Also, Thomas Nelson bets three carries, 56 yards for El Dorado. Uh, again, it's all been on the ground, 244 total yards for El Dorado, 138 for Clint, who came into the ball game uh, averaging 430 yards on the ground. So we're here. It's homecoming. You're at uh, the sack. Halftime, El Dorado, on top of Clinton, a good one, 20 to 19. All right, Steve, thank you. And, Bo, this just in from Pecos. (laughs) Fabens on the prowl, the Wildcats. 31 to 25 now, 215 left to play in the third quarter. And I I just got to tell you, this this one makes no sense. Fabens overmatched. Pecos, a lot better than they are. On the road, but here comes Fabens, man. I don't know what's going on. 31-25, Fabens. Remember, they were down 31-6, to and that was in the second quarter. Absolutely. Here come the Wildcats. Hey, come on, Fabens. Uh, this is going to be an exciting one. See if they can pull away from uh, Pecos here in the second half. Down 31-6, to now closed to within six. And this one from uh, Hanks' Excalibur Stadium now. Headed to halftime, Burgess Mustangs all over the Knights. Uh, 41 to 6 now. Hanks gave him a good run for about a quarter and a half, but uh, Mustangs now starting to separate. And also at halftime, Bel Air over San Eli, 42 0. Talk about separation there. That mm-hmm. game has been all Bel Air down at Eagle Stadium. Hey, let's go out to Parkland's Matador Stadium. Join J.D. Sursley for an update at halftime between the Bowie Bears and the Parkland Matadors. Yeah, we're at halftime. Unfortunately, there has been no update. It is 34-0. And um, fortunately for Bowie, there's been no update. But the last four minutes uh, was ran poorly by each team. Uh, Parkland even put in their second-string quarterback, Brian Albanon. He threw a pick and actually got injured on the play. So the starters could be coming out in the second half. 34-0 halftime, Parkland. Okay, J.D., thank you very much. Uh, big lead for the Parkland Matadors. Not surprising there, c- considering the, the caliber of team that they have and the really difficult schedule they've played. Do you think they, they pull away from, from Bowie and they do just that? Yeah, and, and even though yeah, they have a walkover in Bowie, and I think even though we knew both these things, teams were uh, 0-3 coming in, this was, this was an easy game for Bowie. But uh, you just mentioned, uh, you just heard uh, Brian Alboran mention. Remember, he's the starting quarterback. Uh, J.D. just called him the backup. I'm not, I'm not sure that's accurate. Starting quarterback week one, and he got injured week two. And then they uh, went to uh, Yosef uh, Mihadis. But I don't think Parkland really knows who their starting quarterback is yet. I think it's work, even though Alboran was out, I think it's a – you know, a work in pro- progress trying to figure out exactly who is 
you know, the starting quarterback in this one. I think it's more of that at the at the moment. It's Mihadis, but uh, Alboran's getting some play, and and uh, I think it's still up in the air. You know, up until whenever District gets rolling. And probably likely in the, the third quarter, they probably sit some starters because they have another big home game next week. The Parkland Matadors host the Divide Conquistadors. So uh, they'll have their eye on that one as this uh, this turns into about of a walkover almost. Parkland over Bowie, 34 nothing. Hey, let's head back out to Riverfront Stadium. Join Joe Rodriguez for an update. Joe, are you there? Do you have your phone on? Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I am sorry. I couldn't hear you guys. 10 20 to go in the third quarter, and it is Riverside leading by the score of 24 to 7 over the Horizon Scorpions. On the opening possession, the uh, Scorpions are already in red zone territory after only five plays on a drive that started at their own 32 yard line. <laughs> they will have a sh- second and uh, one coming up from the Riverside, uh, excuse me, from the Horizon six yard line. Let me give you some quick halftime stats for this game. The Horizon Scorpions had seven first downs. They had 77 yards rushing on the ground off of 13 plays. Uh, quarterback for the, um, the the Horizon Scorpions, Jacob Kihas, went seven for 11 with one interception, 94 yards, a total of 171 yards um, uh, for total offense for the Scorpions. Over on the Riverside Rangers side of things, they had nine first downs uh, they had 21 rushes for 110 yards. The quarterback, Angel Munoz, had seven completions off of 10 attempts for 134 yards. Total offense for the Riverside Rangers in the first half was 244 yards. And the man of the game so far has been Angel Munoz. He's had 11 carries, being the quarterback, for 78 yards, one rushing touchdown. He's also 7 for 10 for 134 yards through the air and one touchdown pass. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you in the studio with 9.08 to go in the third quarter. It is Riverside leading Horizon by the score of 24 to 7. And, Bo, I could have sworn that Joe Rod was going to start with, can you hear me now? <laughs> Can, can you can you hear me now? <laughs> Bueller. Yeah. Hey, great job, Joe. Thank you very much. Riverside up 24 to 7 over Horizon at halftime. And an update from our Cisco Movers game of the week from Alex Nicholas via Twitter. He said, credit to the defensive genius of Scott Brooks. Canatio Delvai with the ball to open up the second half. Really going to make a statement down 14-0. Canatio forces a three and out to start the second half. But then Delvai's defense steps up, forces a three and out for Canatio. So a uh, big defensive battle to start the third quarter there at Lowenberg Stadium. We'll get an update from Alex in just a little bit. Want to remind you our senior player of the game is brought to you by the Greater El Paso Football Showcase. The senior football players must have your SAT and ACT results submitted by December 1st to be eligible for combine and the game. Go to 915showcase.com and the social and their social media to see weekly top 5 performers, scores and stats of teams and players and more. That's Greater El Paso Football Showcase for all senior football players if you want to be eligible for the combine and the All-Star game. I just got a little word from our Jaime Chavez, whose game has gone to halftime. Jefferson and Isleta tied it 21 all. I thought that was already to have. So another surprise uh, score in there. Uh, Take a wild guess. I'm assuming uh, through the air again, the Isleta Indians have found something against that Jefferson defensive backfield. So Isleta scores just before halftime. I think there was only about 20 seconds left, the last report that we heard from Coach Jaime Chavez. So Isleta gets a big score there right before halftime, tying up the game with 21. Now, remember, Jefferson led that game 21-0. So Isleta mounting a huge comeback, now tying the game at 21. No, it's going to be a fun one in the second half. And you get to see what you know what Jefferson's all about. What what's what's in the kitchen. You know, they've they've come through some big games. Remember uh, that season opener, what was it Alpine? They were way down in that one and uh, came all the way back. Uh, Alcala with a pick six near the end of that one to uh, seal it. So, you know, they've been here before in a tough contest. Let's see what they got in the second half against, uh, I don't know, Alameda rival uh, Asleta. Absolutely. Going to be exciting second halves all over the borderland in the land of enchantment. Remember Las Cruces and Mayfield tied up at 14 at halftime at the Field of Dreams. That should be a fun one in front of 10,000 at a capacity crowd stadium of the Field of Dreams. So we're going to have your second half reports and much more coming up next on Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. 
Let's go back to Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. All right, Sal, thank you very much. An exciting night all over the borderland in the land of enchantment. We have our first final of the night, the Pecos. Actually, I don't even know the Pecos mascot. Uh, Pecos. Well, Pecos has defeated Fabens. The Wildcats fall at Pecos 31-26. So the Fabian Wildcats fall to 1-2, and 1-3 and three overall. And other action. And the Field of Dreams, the Crucis Bulldogs, take a 21-14 lead over the Mayfield Trojans. Once again, at the Field of Dreams, Calvin Cox, a long touchdown, putting Mayfield up early, but the Trojans have relinquished their lead, and the Las Cruces Bulldogs lead 21-14 over Mayfield. And all I was going to say was, Back to Fabens, they may have lost 31-26, but they went down scratching and clawing. They were down 31-6 to in that one, and it's the Pecos Eagles. Thanks, Sal. I'm getting an update there. The Pecos Eagles, victorious over the Fabens Wildcats. You know, Fabens down 31-6 to in that game, making it a game. 20 unanswered points, but then fall 31-26. Really tough game for the Fabens Wildcats. Yeah, ni- nice comeback. Uh, as I said, the Eagles can't scratch and claw, though. They just use their talons. and <laughs> there, there Wild cats can sk- scratch and claw, and that's what Fabian <laughs> Absolutely. Want to head back out to our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Cisco Movers can help with packing, boxing, heavy lifting, and moving your belongings to your next destination. CiscoMovers.com. Let's join Alex Nicholas from Julius and Irene Loewenberg Stadium for Del Valle and Canateo. Alex. 420 and running here in the third quarter. And Del Valle on the board as they trail kind of field 14 to 7. It would be a 10 play, 77 yard scoring drive capped off by a one yard quarterback sneak from Jesse Ramos, who went in under center. That would cap off a long run. A third down and five here for Cano Field. They throw to the far side, all oh, in and out of the hands of Tony Adiala. Incomplete and looks like Del Valle will take over after a punt here. So exactly four minutes left in the third quarter. Canofield 14, Del Valle 7. Alex, thank you very much. And like to remember that first game of the year, no score between Del Valle and Coronado to start the season for a, half. for a half. No score at halftime. And then what happened? Del Valle scored 26 in the second half to defeat Coronado 26 to 6. Are we seeing something similar at Canatillo? Well, time will tell. We'll see. Early on, just four minutes to go in the third quarter. 14-7, to Canateo over Delvai. Let's head out to R.E. McKee Stadium and join Joey Panisi for the Irvin Rockets and the Chapin Huskies. An update from this gun that, that Chapin led 28 nothing at halftime. Whoa. Uh, Joey, what's the update? Yes, we're still at the half. Uh, the Chapin uh, halftime show just ended. Uh, so, of course, the score remains Chapin 28, Irvin 0 I'll tell you what, this coach, Ryan Werner, as I was looking over the stats, has really done a great job of uh, coaching this team. Uh, He's produced a balanced um, attack on Irvin, 11 passes and 14 runs. And these running backs of his, I know they're missing their big star, but this this kid, Maurice Jenkins, is averaging eight yards per carry. So that's keeping uh, Irvin's defense honest while Standifer steps back, and that front line of Chapin is giving him all the time in the world. I mean, he's a 10 for 11 for 194 yards. Uh, Irvin, well, let's see what they can do this second half. They only had one um, first down in that first half, so maybe they can get some offense going. But they've got to be more than one-dimensional because right now um, Chapin is just swarming that quarterback from Irvin. So, Sending it back to you now. We're just underway. Chapin's getting ready to kick off at the half. Chapin, 28, Irvin, 0. And both is just in from our Jaime Chavez. Uh, the Sleda Jeff game, of course, has gone 21 21 at the half. Gavin Espino, a nine yard touchdown reception. That explosive kid in relation to our very own Sal Montes uh, knots that one at halftime. That's going to be a heck of a second half out there. Jaime's got a good one. That is, they must have drone. They must have driven the field in the last 20, 30 seconds, but a nine-yard touchdown for the Isleta Indians. That's pretty exciting. So, hey, let's head out to where are we going next? Brandon Cohn 
at Burgess Mustang Stadium. Last check, it was 19-7. to Anthony over Cathedral at halftime. Let's join Brandon and the Iceman for an update. Brandon. Here, third quarter, same score. Anthony, 19-7 to over Burgess. Again, highlights from the first quarter. Anthony, a running back, Raymond Hernandez, a 62 yards on the ground, but two touchdowns. And also, Anthony uh, Carminas has a 61-yard touchdown reception. Certainly, Anthony uh, held their own here in the first half. They have the ball here to start the third quarter, and they're on their side of the field. 9.28 remaining here, third quarter at Burgess Mustang Stadium. Anthony with a 90-7 to lead over the Irish. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. Let's head out to Riverside and Horizon at Riverfront Stadium. Get an update from Joe Rodriguez. Joe. Got got me? Go, Jim. Yeah, 442 left into third quarter, and we have ourselves a ball game out here at Riverfront Stadium as the Riverside Rangers lead the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 27 to 14. Um, the opening possession by the Riverside Rangers led to just only a 23-yard field goal by Jonathan Reyes, his second field goal of the night. The Horizon Scorpions defense held tough in the red zone. And on the ensuing possession, the Scorpions went 45 yards in six plays, a three-yard touchdown run by quarterback Jacob Quijada to bring us to where we're at right now, 27-14. Riverside intercepted, or excuse me, the Scorpions intercepted the ball uh, off of a deep pass that was intended by quarterback Angel Munoz. So they have the ball back right now. They got it back at their own 20-yard line, and right now it is third and 10 for the Horizon Scorpions at their own 35-yard line with 417 left in the third quarter. We have a ball game out here at Riverfront Stadium, but still, it is the home team, the Riverside Rangers, leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 27 to 14. So, with Jacob Kihas uh, siding uh, the three-yard touchdown run to get to Horizon back in this one, and it seems like a trend here tonight. But a lot of teams that got smashed uh, out of the box, especially first quarter, starting to creep their way back into the game, including those Fabens Wildcats who. Scratched and clawed their way. <laughs> Keep the, telling the, it until the, you get a laugh. The, 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 Eagles, the Eagles flew away with that one beating Fabens, 31-26. <laughs> but again, Riverside, Riverside up 21-0 in that game. We thought that would be a blowout. Yep. Here comes Horizon, 27-14. Horizon making a game of it. That's pretty exciting. Let's see if the Bowie Bears can make a game of it at the Matador Stadium against the Parkland Matadors. Last check, it was 34-0 Parkland at halftime. Let's catch up with J.D. Sursley for an update. J.D. Yes, we are still at halftime up in Parkland. It is their homecoming, so I do want to congratulate Parkland at a great homecoming thus far. Uh, still halftime, 34-0, to zero, and I do have to highlight Anthony Carrillo, who is over 150 yards with three touchdowns. It's phenomenal coming out of the backfield and then just making Bowie's life miserable as quick as he comes out of the line. Again, it's still halftime, 34-0. All right, J.D., thank you very much. All right, J.D., thank you very much. Still halftime at uh, several homecomings. Those homecoming halftimes, they just last forever, don't they? But still having fun out there, so congratulations to Parkland again, up 34 nothing over Bowie. Just at halftime, we'll see if the Bowie Bears can come back in the second half. Hey, let's catch up with Steve Escajeda over at the Student Activities Complex between Clint and El Dorado. Clint really making a game of this one. Let's see if the Lions can pull away in the second half and get an update from Steve. Steve, take it away. Well, we're at uh, 10 minutes, uh, about 10 seconds to go here in the third quarter. We just kicked off the second half. Again, a longer halftime show because of the uh, El Dorado homecoming. But Clint's taken the uh, uh, kickoff in the second half, and they've driven it uh, uh, all down to their uh, their own 42-yard line, looking at a second down, eight yards to go. Uh, they're down 20 to 19. Again, a really good first half. Uh, both teams kind of taking turns uh, at each other. Uh, again, we said, like we said earlier, the big guy tonight so far has been. Uh, El Dorado running back Isaiah Ruddison, seven carries, 183 yards in that first half and three big touchdowns. But again, Clint now looking at a third down on their own 43, trying to take the lead. 9.35 to go here in the third. It's El Dorado 20, Clint 19. 
All right, Steve, thank you very much. Exciting game out there at the SAC. Hey, let's head out to Jefferson Silver Fox Stadium for a halftime update from Coach Jaime Chavez. As Leta got a touchdown just before half. Coach, what's the update? At a tie ball game and halftime at the Silver Fox Stadium, Jefferson 21, is led at 21 in halftime activities. Uh, homecoming activities are underway here at the Jefferson. And Damon Contreras, the Isleta quarterback, coming on strong in the second quarter. He fired a nine yard touchdown pass to Evan Espinosa with eight seconds left in the half to tie the ball game. Contreras also has. Uh, He's got two more touchdown passes, a 48-yard touchdown pass to Isaiah Jurado and a 42-yard touchdown pass to Andres Martinez Contreras. He's 8 of 10, 147 yards passing, three touchdowns and two interceptions. And this game is a, a tale of two quarters. And it was Jefferson who came on strong in the first quarter. Nathan Ancala, the quarterback, uh, two touchdown passes, 52 yards to Nick Rivas and 48 yards to uh, – Roman Gomez and Andana also has a one-yard touchdown run. And he's 9 of 11 for 206 yards passing and the two touchdowns. Andana, four carries, 34 yards rushing. And running back uh, Arturo Rubio for Jefferson, eight carries, 53 yards rushing. We've got about uh, nine minutes left in, uh, with the homecoming activities here at the Silver Fox Stadium. We've got a tie ball game. Jefferson 21, he's led at 21. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Might just be the best game of the night out there. Going to be an exciting one at Silver Fox Stadium, tied at 21. We have a live update from Riverfront Stadium. Let's head back to Joe Rodriguez for the update on Horizon and Riverside. Joe. 151 left in the third quarter, and it is the Riverside Rangers leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 29 to 20. That's right, an 80 yard, eight play drive that ended in a seven yard touchdown run by running back Ernie Garcia for the Horizon Scorpions on that field goal attempt, or an extra point attempt, excuse me, by Angel Simmental. It was blocked and it was ran back by Frank Luna for a two point conversion for the Riverside Rangers. Keeping this a two-score ball game in favor of the Riverside Rangers. Key play on that drive for the Horizon Scorpions where they went 80 yards in eight plays. They went for it on fourth and five from their own 40-yard line. A gutsy call by Coach Melendez. Ended up paying dividends, but then again, all of that momentum shifted completely when the Riverside Rangers were able to convert off of the blocked extra point for a two point conversion. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you in the studios with 151 left in the third quarter. It is Riverside leading Horizon by the score of 29 to 20. Wow, a two-point conversion there on the after the touchdown on the PA attempt by Horizon blocked by Riverside taken back. Thank you very much, Joe. Hey, end of the third quarter over at Julius and Irene Lowenberg Stadium. Let's catch up with Alex Nicholas to see if we still got the same score, 14-7 between Canadio and Devay. Alex, take it away. Start of the fourth quarter. Fast-moving game over here at Lowenberg Stadium. It's still Canadio leading Del Valle, 14-7. First play of the fourth quarter is a third down for the throw bomb. Near side to LJ Martin, and LJ Martin has it. Near side, and he is gone. 10-5. Touchdown, Cano Theo, 75 yards on a third down and nine. Devin Granados goes up top to the playmaker, and that's Martin's third touchdown of the evening. Had two on the ground, and this one from 75 yards out. Man, he's racking up the long touchdown had, uh, plays today. A 58-yard run, a 77-yard run, and then a 75-yard run on a little wheel route here on the near side. For the score, 11:47 left here in the third quarter. Extra point pending. Cano Theo extends the lead 20 to seven over Del Valle. Hot action, gentlemen. Wow, L.J. Martin putting it together tonight against the Del Valle Conquistadors. Over 200 rushing yards so far at the start of the fourth quarter, and he's uh, he's putting together up likely up 21 to seven after uh, the pending extra point. Uh, a huge start, huge start to the fourth quarter for the Kennedy Eagles. And from a guy that we consider a grinder, big back, tough yards, 70-yard touchdown run, 77-yard touchdown run, and a 75-yard pass reception. Uh, big play, L.J. Martin. Uh, you know, forget that uh, 
Forget that grinder stuff. By the way, he did this through the air last week. A uh, couple of touchdown receptions uh, a week ago in that uh, win over Chapin to go with his uh, little over 100 yards and a uh, touchdown run. Boy, he this guy's saving it for the big occasions, is he not? Boy, and it couldn't come at a better time for the Kansas City Eagles tonight. He opened the season with a couple of hundred yards against Burgess in that win, but the last couple of weeks, is, you know, it's been like he's okay. LJ, yeah, he's there. Ran for a hundred, scored a touchdown. I think it was one twelve one week, maybe one twenty the other. Uh, hasn't done a lot of anything. As I said, they, they've really been saving this guy up. Looks like. What a showing so far for Canateo in our Cisco Movers game of the week. Canateo leads Delvai 21-7 at the start of the fourth quarter. Other action we have, Burgess over Hanks 41-6. Belair over Sanelli 42-0. Last check, Crucis adds another second half touchdown. They go up on Mayfield 28-14. And Mountain View now up to uh, 33 zip over Hatch Valley. Uh, Salcedo de Maciel for the touchdown uh, reception to uh, lengthen that one. Uh, Mountain View looking good going toward district. Mountain View looking like they're going to improve to 3-1 and one in Mountain View. Guess what? Do you think they can hang? They're at Canateo next week. Well, that might be Ooh, a little tough a little for tough. Mountain View. But, hey, a, a 3-1 and one Mountain View squad likely after this game. It's very, very nice for the Lobos. Mountain View up over Hatch Valley 33-0. All right. We're going to take a break, come back with all of our games going into the second half. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. 600 ESPN El Paso and 95.5 KLAQ present UTEP Football 2021. Down, this is Adrian Broaddus. With Sal Montes. This season, you'll hear a mix of UTEP football games live on KLAQ and 600 ESPN El Paso. Game four against the New Mexico Lobos, Saturday, September 25th. And after the game, get ready for minor talk. Only on 600 ESPN El Paso. Experience unique flavors at Taco Avocados. First, start with a signature hand-rolled taco. Choose between chicken, pork, ground beef, southwest chicken, or... You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Let's go back to Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. Thank you, Sal, and our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Canadio leads Delvai 21-7. We'll have an update from Alex Nicholas in just a moment. Other action at halftime. Isleta and Jefferson tied at 21. Chapin all over the Irvin Rockets, 28-0 at half. Anthony over Cathedral, 19-7 at halftime. Riverside and Horizon in the third quarter. Riverside up 29-20. An exciting game there. We'll have an update from Joe Rodriguez in just a moment. At the sack... El Dorado leads Clint 27-19 in the third quarter. And then in the third, also third quarter at Matador Stadium, Parkland leads Bowie 41-0. In other action, Burgess all over Hanks in the third quarter, 48-6. At half at last check, Bel Air leads Sanelli 42-0. Up in Las Cruces at the Field of Dreams. Start of the fourth quarter, Las Cruces leads Mayfield 28-14. In the second half, Mountain View leads Hatch Valley 33-0. And the only final so far from today, Pecos defeats Fabens 31-26. Now time for a Longhorn Distributing out-of-town scoreboard with Paul McKinnon. Paul, what do you got? Both thanks. Last score we had from uh, Grande Communications, Midland Legacy up 29 zip on Arlington Bowie. They're going to win that one and move to 3-1. and one. Bowie's going to drop to 1-4. and four. This one's a final. Amarillo Tascosa with a bullet. Hot off last week's win over Permian. This week they take care of San Angelo Central. Wow. They're going right through that District 26A. 46-28. Tascosa wins that one. Uh, wow, look at Tascosa. And, and probably going to be a force to deal with uh, once playoffs roll around. Uh, remember, they are 5A now. Elsewhere, Amarillo Friendship 31-14. Last we heard, Friendship Friendship looking to stay undefeated. Amarillo 2-1. and one, Looking to move to 3-1. and one. Uh, Fourth quarter score. Wow, a shootout here. Odessa 2-1 and one against undefeated Wichita Falls rider 43-40 Odessa up just by a field goal that'd be a huge win for those guys Thursday nighter Lubbock Coronado all over Midland 42 to 17 both those teams now one and three Canyon beats Amarillo Caprock 30 to 20 wow what a surprise Canyon moves to three and one Caprock 
falls to one and three. Also, Lubba Cooper off that 14-13 loss a week ago. Friendship got them. Well, 28-21, they get Lubbock Monterey. They get the uh, Super 5A team, 28-21, as they move to three and one. Monterey falls to two and two. Paladuro beats Borger in a Thursday nighter, 20-13 to stay undefeated. Wichita Falls gets their first win of the season. They beat Burke Burnett, 35 to 14 and Canyon Randall all over Pampa 28 to 7 and Bo that is our out of town scoreboard. All right, thank you Paul. Brought to you by Longhorn Distributing, Longhorn Distributing 5516 East Paisano Drive in El Paso. They're there, your source for cleaning equipment, service and supplies. And we have an update from Lowenberg Stadium in our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Let's join Alex Nicholas with an update from Canateo hosting Delvai. Alex, take it away. 901 left here in our ball game. Canateo 21 Delvai 4 it would be a five play 30 or five play 62 yard drive for Del Valle. It would be capped off by a three yard run from Jesse Ramos on a quarterback keeper, his second of the evening. That uh, play was uh, two plays before that. Eli Molina sighting. Molina with a tip catch inside the 25 yard line, breaks free, caught from behind inside the five. Two plays later, Ramos goes in. Extra point is good. Eli Molina, six catches, 129 yards. Five catches for 124 yards in the second half. He's really, really come alive. And, uh, and Canotillo right now uh, off that on their first down play with a 10-yard penalty. So they're back deep in their own territory. 8.50 left in the ballgame. Canotillo holding on to a 21-14 lead over Delay. Bo Bagley, I think you called that one. You're the one that said, hey, remember Coronado? Remember game one? Remember how they were scoreless at halftime? And you remember how Delay started, started scoring points in the second half? They came back and win 26 unanswered points against Coronado in the second half. Right now, 14 in the second half. Outscoring Canetillo 14-7 to in the second half, Del Valle is. And it looks like they're running out of time against a better team. They're another West Side team along with Coronado, but a better team Canetillo is in the Coronado Thunderbirds this year. That could be an exciting finish, so we'll keep you up to date with Alex Nicholas. Alex, thank you very much. 21-14, Canetillo leads Del Valle with nine minutes to go in that ball game. Hey, Let's head up back out to Joe Rodriguez in Riverfront Stadium. Riverside and Horizon turning in to be an exciting game. It was once 21-0 Riverside. Thought it was going to be a blowout, but here come the Scorpions. Let's get an update from Joe Rod. Joe, take it away. 8.45 left in the ball game, and it is Riverside leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 29-20. to 20. However, uh, the Riverside Rangers had to punt on their last possession after they were going to go for it on 4th and 5th. They had a false start, so they were forced to punt it. The Horizon Scorpions took the ball at their own 19-yard line, and now it is first and 10, and they just completed a pass. Moving into the red zone, they were at the Riverside 30-yard line. They just moved into the uh, 16-yard line off of a pass by quarterback Jacob Giga, so it'll be first and 10 for the Horizon Scorpions at the Riverside 15-yard line with 8.22 left in the ballgame. I have a feeling we're going to be calling you back here shortly. It is Horizon, or excuse me, Riverside leading Horizon by the score of 29-20. All right, Joe, looking forward to that call. Going to be an exciting one there at Riverfront Stadium. Here come the Scorpions storming back, and they do it. Hey, we have another score update from you in the third quarter. Bel Air has taken a 45 to 7 lead over the San Elizario Eagles. Now into the fourth quarter. Uh, also an update, Burgess over Hanks 48 to 6. And the last check, Las Cruces leading Mayfield 28 14. Let's head out to Parkland's Matador Stadium. At last check, 41 0 Parkland over Bowie. Let's Catch up with J.D. Sursley for an update. J.D. 22 left in the third quarter. Uh, major news. Unfortunately, does not favor Bowie still. Um, it is now going to be 50-0, barring a missed field goal. Isaiah Beasley, 48 touchdown, with a now a triple back running HB option set because both of their quarterbacks are down for Parkland. So it is just a... A 3T in the back, and they're just doing HV options. Again, it is 622-490 Parkland. All right. Thank you very much, J.D. 49 nothing Parkland over Bowie. Looks like they're going to be running away with this one. Let's head out to our Cisco Movers Game of the Week because we have an update. 
from Alex Nicholas. We'll get to him in just a moment. An exciting turn of events between the Divine Conquistadors and Canada Teal Eagles. And in fact, Delvai recovered a fumble there at the Canyon Teal five yard line. Look at it! Look at a punch one in. And so, as you said, we'll uh, we'll be to Alex uh, soon, shortly. But there's other action going going around uh, across the city. In exciting games, remember Esleta and Jefferson tied at 21 at halftime. Horizon coming back against Riverside now just a nine point game, 29 20 at Riverfront Stadium. Let's head out to Loewenberg Stadium and join Alex Nicholas for an update on Delvai Canyon Teal. Alex. 7.30 left in our ball game, and we are tied. 21 all between Del Valle and Canotillo. Let's get you caught up, like I mentioned. Right before you guys left me, Del Valle, or excuse me, Canotillo was behind the sticks, facing a third down and about 15, I want to say. Get on those drops back deep inside the 10. He's hit. The ball's loose. Abraham Maltos recovers. Two plays later, Jesse Ramos hooks up with Damon Diaz on a rollout. We're out here to the near side, a little out route, and Diaz was wide open for the score. Extra point was good. Canotillo with a fair catch on the ensuing kickoff. They will take over at their own 40-yard line. Seven and a half minutes left here in the ball game, and it's just he's almost 210 yards passing and a touchdown. Also has two rushing touchdowns on the evening, uh, powering this Del Valle comeback. Tied at 21 between Canotillo and Del Valle, 729 left in the ball game. What a ball game. Our Cisco Movers game of the week proving to be a fantastic one. Delvai storming back, recovering a fumble. Now 21 all at Lowenberg Stadium. And a few of them are going that way, Bo. Uh, our Brandon Cohn just uh, get, uh, called in an update from An- Anthony Cathedral. Rafa Ramirez, an 18-yard touchdown run, gets Cathedral within 19-14. We'll have him on shortly for a real-time update. Absolutely, 1914 Anthony over Cathedral so far. And now let's head back out to Joey Panisi at McKee Stadium, the Chapin Huskies and Irvin Rockets. At last check, it was 28 nothing Chapin at halftime. Let's get an update from Joey Panisi. Joey, take it away. Yes, from Austin Stadium with 318 left in the third quarter. It is now Chapin 49, Austin 0. Um, things have just gone from bad to worse for Austin. Star quarterback, I'm going to go in reverse. John Knutson, their, their glaring star, their blazing star. Ball gets snapped over his head. Um, bad snap. Adrian Reyes from Chapin recovers it and rumbles it in for, from 10 yards. So that was their last score. And then let me give credit to this little George Perez. His first two kickoffs were squib kicks, and they rolled inside Irvin's five-yard line. Irvin got pinned, could barely hold on to the ball and kick it out, and then Martin Stand- Mason Standifer goes to work. His first strike was 28 yards to Zach Ortega with 10.50. Then he comes back with 4.54 and hits Anthony Rivera on a 41-yard BB, making it 42-0, and then the fumble. So Irvin's just having a hard time tonight. But let's give a little credit to the kicker. I think he's about 5-5 and a buck 50. But he's seven for seven, and he has just done his job on special teams. So, with two twelve left in the third quarter, it is now Chapin forty nine, Austin zero. All right, Joey, thank you very much. We have a live update from Riverfront Stadium. Let's join Joe Rodriguez for an update on Horizon and Riverside. Joe. 7.03 left in the ball game, and it is Riverside leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 29-28. to 28. A 10-play, 81-yard drive ended with a 10-yard touchdown pass from Jacob Quijas to Angel Gutierrez. The two-point conversion was good, a pass from Quijas to Aaron Barrero, uh, which brings us to where we're at right now. Uh, but as I'm bringing in this report, the Riverside Rangers are now at the Horizon 28-yard line with first and 10 coming up. And the Horizon Scorpions was just called for offside, so it'll be first and five from the Horizon 23-yard line. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you in the studio. With seven minutes left in the ball game. it is Riverside holding on to a one-point lead over the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 29-28. to 28. All right, Joe Rod, thank you very much. Remember, Riverside led that game 21 nothing early in the second quarter. So now just a one-point game at Riverfront Stadium. We'll have an update from Joe in just a little bit. Hey, an exciting one between Anthony and Cathedral. Let's head out to the Iceman, Brandon Cohn, at Burgess Mustang Stadium for an update. Brandon, take it away. 8.20 left in this game. 
And the Cathedral Fighting Irish got a little closer. It's Anthony 19 to 14 over Cathedral at the 11 15 mark here of the fourth. Cathedral starts with exceptional field position at the Anthony 31. Three plays later, Irish running back Rafa Ramirez scores an 18 yard TD, his second of the game, making the score Anthony 19 to 14. Anthony on the Irish side of the field at the 42 yard line right now. 8.20 left and counting in this one. It's a close one. 19 to 14, Anthony over Cathedral. All right, Brandon. Boy, we we had some blowouts earlier, and now they're all coming up close. So this is going to be exciting. Thank you, Brandon. We'll check in with you in just a little bit. Also, another close one over at the sack between El Dorado and Clint. Let's join Steve Escajeda for an update. Steve. Oh, we're going back to Alex, our Cisco update. Movers. Our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. We got a live update. Let's go out to Alex Nicholas at our Game of the Week, Canateo Divai. Alex. 6.52 and running left here in the ballgame. Canoteo takes a 28-21 lead over Del Valle. That first play of Canoteo's, uh, first play of Canoteo's next series after the Del Valle touchdown, it would be a quick hitch pass, uh, hitch, hitch pass here to the near side. Lorenzo Adiola takes it. 60 yards to the house, extra point would be good. 640 left here in the ball game. It is Cano Theo 28, Del Valle 21. Del Valle driving near midfield with all three, three timeouts left and a chance to tie here in the fourth quarter. All right, another exciting one. Thank you so much, Alex. What? Cano Theo scoring and it's not LJ Martin? Wait a minute. But it shows you they got some firepower. And it's only 60 yards, not 77 or 70. or Wow. It's cooking out there. We're playing some high school football in El Paso tonight. Oh, this is exciting. All right, let's head out to another close one at the sack and join Steve Escajeda for Clint Eldorado. Steve. We've got 924 to go in the ball game, and uh, Eldorado now up in front of Clint 30. To 19. Uh, that guy, guess who? Isaiah Rudison, his fourth touchdown of the ball game, this time a 77 yard run. That uh, go along with a couple of 45 yarders and a 66 yarder. Rudison in the ball game so far, I'll tell you what, 15 carries, 273 yards, and four big touchdowns. Also, uh, Noah, Noah Moreno just added a 26 yard field goal, uh, again, to make it now 30. 30- to 19 El Dorado, and uh, time is starting to run out on the Clinton Lions, who uh, again came into the ball game averaging 430 yards a game rushing, uh, so far just 201 on 32 carries. 9.22 to go in the fourth. El Dorado 30, Clint 19. All right, Steve, thank you very much. An exciting game out there at the stack between Clint and El Dorado. Hey, all tied up at halftime, 21 all between Isleta and Jefferson. Let's join the coach, Jaime Chavez, for an update of this exciting game. Coach. We've got 540 left in the third quarter, and it's it's still a tie ball game. Jefferson 21, Isleta 21. Mm. Got something of a a quarterback duel, uh, Damien Contreras, three touchdown passes for Isleta of – 48 yards to Isaiah Jurado and 42 yards to Andres Martinez and also a nine-yard touchdown pass, pass to Gavin Espino. Contreras is 11 of 17 for 210 yards passing. Three touchdown and one interception. And one of those passes was picked off by Jeff's uh, Nathan Alcala. Alcala, the, uh, also uh, the quarterback for Jefferson, he's got some good numbers, nine of 12, 206 yards passing, two touchdowns. And he's got a 48-yard touchdown pass to Nate Levas and a uh, 42-yard touchdown pass to Roman Gomez. Make that, no, make that a 19-yard touchdown pass to Roman Gomez. And Alcala also has a one-yard touchdown run. So we've got 5.05 left in the third quarter at uh, Silver Fox Stadium. Tie ball game, Jeff 21. He's at 21. All right, another barn burner out there at Silver Fox Stadium. Coach, thank you so much. We got a live update from Riverfront Stadium. Let's join Joe Rodriguez for Horizon and Riverside. Joe. 532 left in the ballgame, and it is the Riverside Rangers leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 36 to 28. A six play, 41 yard drive ended in a 14 yard touchdown run on a quarterback keeper by Angel Munoz. The extra point, despite. Being moved back on the penalty um, was good by kicker Jonathan Reyes, who has been money 
all night long for the Riverside Rangers. And just as I say that, he kicked the ball out of bounds on the ensuing kickoff. So the Horizon Scorpions are going to get a better field position than they anticipated with five minutes and 32 seconds left on the clock. And we might have a, a possible overtime game if the Horizon Scorpions were to score and uh, make and convert on the two-point conversion. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you all in the studio with 532 left in the ball game out here at Riverfront Stadium. It is the home team, the Riverside Rangers, leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 36 to 28. Boy, what a game there between Riverside and Horizon. Thank you so much, Joe. We got a live update from Loewenberg Stadium in our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Let's go join Alex Nicholas for Delvai at Canateo. Alex, what do you got? We got some drama here, gentlemen. 447, 28, or 447 left in the fourth quarter. Canotillo holding on to a 28 21 lead. We're going to get a measurement on a third down and short. The far side official has it about a yard short. The ball is resting at the 44 and a half yard line as the officials stretch the chains here on the near side. And it's going to be, oh, that's close. I haven't seen an official signal yet. Are they going to have to re? Stretch this out. Let's see. They give, they'll give Del Valle a first down. So first down, Del Valle at the Canotillo 43-yard line. 447 left in the ball game, and Canotillo holding on to a 28-21 lead. Del Valle with uh, two times. Actually, they're going to check that. They're going to move the chains towards the middle of the field and restretch them out. It looks like. And now I guess the officials don't want to stretch it out again. They've seen enough. They're going to go ahead and give Del Valle that first down. Seems like there was two measurements on this one. So Del Valle driving 447 left here in the fourth. Charlie Canotillo 28-21. All right, Alex, thank you very much. Some other score updates. Burgess now leads Hanks 55-6. to And also Las Cruces leads Mayfield 35-14. Tavares Jones in that Burgess game, three touchdown runs on the night and even threw another, so uh, he's done for the night Uh, as as well he should be. Yeah, absolutely. Nice game for uh, Tavares Jones of the Burgess Mustangs. All right, we're going to take a break, come back, and we're going to get some scores from all of these close games. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Let's go back to Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. Silky smooth Sal Montes. Thank you very much. We have some finals from around the borderland. Bel Air top San Eli. This is a final. Bel Air 45, San Elizario 7. So Bel Air improves to 2-2 two two overall. It's a final up in Las Cruces. Bulldogs top the Mayfield Trojans 35-14. That's your final. And an update from Hank's Excalibur Stadium. Burgess now takes a 61-6 lead over the Hank's Knights. And an update from Hatch Valley. Mountain View leads Hatch Valley 39-0. Another exciting game. A Cisco Movers Game of the Week exciting game. Let's head out to Alex Nicholas for an update of Del Valle and Canateo. 234 left here in the fourth quarter. Timeout on the field. Ganothio leading Del Valle, 28-21. Let's sit you up where we're at right now. It's a third down and about nine for Del Valle at the Ganothio 20-yard line. Ball will be on the far hash. Second half, Jesse Ramos has really gotten things going. He's 19 of 28 passing, 268 yards and a touchdown, but a big, big third down and nine coming up from the red zone with 234 left here in the fourth quarter. The Del Valle player who was down is being walked off here to the near sideline. So let me know what you guys want to go from here. If you guys want me to cover this third down play here or if we want to kick it back to you guys. No, kick it back to us. Thank you very much, Alex. We'll catch you up with you in just a moment. We have a live update from Riverfront Stadium. Let's catch up with Joe Rodriguez for Horizon Riverside. Joe, take it away. 354 left in the ball game, and it is Riverside leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 42 to 36. Let me tell you how we got here. When I last left you, it was 36 to 28 in favor of the Riverside Rangers. The Horizon Scorpions went three plays, uh, 40, excuse me, they went three plays and, uh, and 60 yards to make it a tie ball game, a 45-yard touchdown run by Jacob Quijada, spectacular run, gets him into the end zone, 
They go for two. Quijadas converts the two-point conversion on a quarterback keeper. That was at the 436 mark left to go in the ball game. It was tied 36-36. From there, the Riverside Rangers take the ball at their own 44-yard lines. And two plays later, Angel Munoz takes it to the house from four yards out after having a run of 48 and 14 yards on that drive. So right now it has turned into a battle between the two quarterbacks, Jacob Quijas for the Horizon Scorpions and Angel Munoz for the Riverside Rangers. They are running the ball, and the defenses cannot stop them. Right now, uh, there is a timeout on the field due to an injured player. The extra point is pending for the Riverside Rangers. The only question remains is, like I thought when um, the Horizon Scorpions tied the ball game, that they might have left too much time for the Riverside Rangers. Well, yeah. Two plays later, they scored to extend the lead. Now, my question remains the same. Have the Riverside Rangers left too much time for the Horizon Scorpions to uh, tie this ball game, or even possibly take the lead? Only time will tell, and we will bring this action to you as it develops. So I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you in the studio. We're pending an extra point try by the Riverside Rangers, but for now, it is the Riverside Rangers leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 42 to 36 with 354 left in the ball game. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Wow, what a game. No defense there in the second half. All the fans, I'm sure, loving that. 42-36, just a couple minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Let's head out to Jefferson. Hosting Isleta joined Coach Jaime Chavez at last check. It was tied at 21 in the second half. Coach, what's the update there? Well, 137 left in the third quarter. It is now Jefferson 28 and Isleta 21. Arturo Rubio, Jefferson running back, he just uh, took off on a 42-yard touchdown run. The extra point is good. Rubio's numbers are, are really uh, on the rise now. 14 carries, 121 yards rushing, and that one uh, touchdown. And the quarterback, Jefferson quarterback, uh, Nathan Alcala, he's, got, he's also got a one-yard touchdown run, and he's also fired two touchdown passes. Alcala is... Um, He's 11 of 18 for 206 yards passing. On the other side, Damian Contreras for Isleta. Three touchdowns, three touchdown passes and two interceptions. 11 of 18, 210 yards passing. So 135 left in the third quarter at Silver Fox Stadium. It is now Jefferson 28, Isleta 21. And Bo, a major bullet dodged out of Lohenberg Stadium. Del Valle deep in Kennedy Teal uh, territory. Jesse Ramos scrambling, gets hit, coughs up the ball. Canyon Teal recovers deep in their own end. 2.14 wow. left in that one. Uh, not over yet. We'll be hearing from Alex Nicholas uh, again shortly. But Canyon Teal defense steps up and, uh, wow, maybe grabs the game with two minutes to go. Wow, what an update there. Also another update from uh, Chapin and Irvin. Chapin now up 56-7 to over the Irvin Rockets. Let's head out to Burgess Mustang Stadium. Joy Brandon Cohn for an update on Anthony Cathedral, a tight one in the second half. Brandon, what do you got? 40 seconds left in this one. Cathedral is taking a one-point lead, 20-19. to 19. And Just a couple seconds ago at the 40-second mark, Cathedral ends up taking the lead on a 19-yard QB keeper by Fernando Yurate. And uh, what a spectacular run as Yurate calls his own number. They're going for the two-point conversion here. Yurate in the shotgun takes the snap, takes the keeper, actually decides to keep it, and gets down to the one. No signal yet. And it looks like they did not convert the two-point conversion. It was a fake handoff to his tailback, Rafa Ramirez, who has two touchdowns on the evening. The keeper, no good. So 40 seconds left in this one, 20-19, to and what's been a great wow. battle here, Cathedral right now, uh, over Anthony. Paul, you guys want to keep it here, or do you guys want to go back to Alex? Let's hold on one second. Let's go back to our game of the week, but stay on the line, Brandon. We'll get back to you in just a moment. Let's get an update from our Cisco Movers game of the week. Alex Nicholas with Delvai and Kenetio. Alex, what's the latest? 155 left here in the ball game. Canotillo leading Del Valle 28-21. When you guys last left me, it was a third down and nine for Del Valle. Uh, I'm going to call that from around the 21-yard line. And Ramos scrambled for his life, rolls left, crosses the line of scrimmage, tried to get a, a defender in the air with a pump fake. He drops the football. It rolls inside the 10-yard line, picking it up with Jesus Carrillo, who recovers it inside the 10-yard line, for, or at the 8-yard line. 
Sanofio runs two plays. They didn't get much, and now they're facing a third down and eight for their own 10-yard line with 155 to go. Del Valle out of timeouts. A big chance here for the Del Valle defense to get the ball back to the red-hot offense. And Jesse Ramos, who outside that fumble has been pretty efficient in this second half as the team's line up here. 155 to go in the fourth quarter. Sanofio 21. Canofio 28, Del Valle 21 is Canofio facing third down and eight here late in the fourth quarter. All right, Alex, thank you very much. What an exciting Cisco Movers game of the week out at Lowenberg Stadium. 28-21, Canatio holding on to just a touchdown lead. Let's head out to the sack and join Steve Escajeda for an update on Clint and El Dorado. Steve. We've got 2.54 to go in the ball game here in, at the sack, and it is now El Dorado 30, Clint 27. Uh, the Alliance just scoring on a 19-yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Isaiah Gonzalez. That's his third touchdown of the ball game. Uh, and believe it or not, they went for two, and it was good on a pass. Yes, a pass from the Clint Lions for two. It was good. It's 30 to 27. Clint just tried the onside kick on that ensuing kickoff. Uh, El Dorado has recovered on their own 44-yard line. They'll take it over from their first and 10, their own 44, with 2.54 to go in the ball game. El Dorado now in a close one out in front of Clint, 30-27. to 27. Woo, close games all over the borderland. Steve, thank you very much. And maybe this one's gone final. Let's get to another close one at Burgess Mustang Stadium between Anthony and Cathedral with the Iceman, Brandon Cohn. Brandon, take it away. 33 seconds left, 20 to 19, Cathedral over Anthony. Anthony quarterbacks the lease at the 40-yard line, and there is a flag on the play as he was trying to go way down the field to Anthony Carminas. Could be a pass interference call. As the crowd is on their feet, a lot of Irish fans here tonight. We're going to await the call. 29 seconds left here in the contest. Again, the Irish with a one-point lead. And it is a pass interference call, and that is going to be on Cathedral. That's a devastating call this late in the game, a 15-yard penalty in high school. It's not a spot foul like the NFL. 29 seconds remaining. Angel Solis at quarterback for the Anthony Wildcats. And the ref's picking up the flag now at this particular point. So, again, you just need to get within field goal range. It's a beautiful evening, calm. Neither team has affected a field goal tonight. With the penalty, it moves the Wildcats down to the 46-yard line of Cathedral. Solis in the gun with his running back Raymond Hernandez behind him, slightly to his right. Two receivers to his right. He looks back, drops back, and throws a bomb down the field. And has his receiver wide open down to number Diego Uscada down all the way to the 25-yard line. Clock stops at 21 seconds. As what a beautiful throw down to Uscada all the way, as I noted, to the 25-yard line. And there's going to be a timeout by Anthony as Angel Solis with a strike. Boy, that was a heck of a throw of about 25 yards, and they're in business first and 10 now. And, again, they're already in field goal range. So do you go for the win? You might as well maybe take a couple shots into the end zone at this point just for the heck of it. And, you know, your kicker, you want to see how much you actually can depend on him. Let's give you some stats on Angel Solis. He's had a very solid night. Hasn't thrown a lot, but been very efficient. Okay, Brandon. Brandon, we have a live update since you're at a timeout. We'll get back to you in just a moment. Let's head out to Alex Nicholas and our game of the week. Oh, Joe Rodriguez at Riverfront Stadium. Joe Rodriguez with an update from Riverfront Stadium and Riverside Horizon. Joe. 140 left in the ball game, and the Riverside Rangers are leading the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 43 to 36. The Riverside Rangers took the lead in this game with 354 left, and the Horizon Scorpions went four plays, turnover on downs. Oh, yeah, and quarterback Jacob Gijas got sacked on the fourth 
and 12 attempt to convert and lost another 12 yards, giving the ball to the Riverside Rangers at the Horizon 15-yard line. And right now with 132 left in the ball game, the Riverside Rangers are looking at a third and three from the Rivers uh, from the Horizon, excuse me, from the Horizon eight yard line coming up with 132, and we have a timeout on the field. I would assume that Horizon was the one that called that timeout. So here we are. It'll be the ball game here with a little bit more than 90 seconds left uh, to see what's going to happen. Okay, in Joe. This one, Joe. Thank with you very field. much. Right. Joe, we got a live update from our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Let's join Alex Nicholas with Delvai Canatillo. What a game at Lowenberg Stadium, Alex. 148 left in the ball game, and we are tied. 28-28 between Canotillo and Delvai. When you guys last left me, Canotillo was facing a third down in uh, third down and nine from their own 10. They would snap it back to Devin Granados. The snap was wide left. It rolls into the end zone. Granados tried to recover it, but he, he kind of misread the bounce. And then on the backside of that, Jonathan Salas hopped on it right in the end zone. And we are tied huh. as Isaiah Williams with a short pooch kick here inside the 38-yard line. That's where Canotillo will start. 148 left in the ballgame. Canotillo with two timeouts left. And we're all tied at 28 between Canotillo and Dovay. Wow, what a game. Our Cisco Movers game of the week is just that. What a game. All right, let's go out to Brandon Cone. We should have a final over at Burgess Mustang Stadium between Anthony and Cathedral. Brandon. Iceman, let's go to you. Do you have a final between Anthony and Cathedral? Not yet. 12 seconds left. 20 to 19. Cathedral over Anthony. Pass interference call gives Cathedral a new set of downs on a Feliz pass to the end zone to Diego Riscongo. Ball now on the Irish 11, and then there was a false start on Anthony. And guess what, fellas? There's another timeout. So we'll do whatever you fellas want to do at this point. Hey, th- All right. Thank you, Brandon. We're going to send it back out to Riverfront Stadium. This is a wild night. This is a lot of fun. We got an update from Riverfront Stadium. Joe Rod, take it away between Horizon and Riverside. Okay, okay, well, this is the ball game. It is uh, uh, kicker Jonathan Reyes from 20, let me get that right, from 26 yards out, and the kick is good, making the score 46 to 36, a two score ball game with 121 left in the ball game for the Horizon Scorpions. Jonathan Reyes has absolutely been. Uh, money as far as uh, kicking field goals for the Riverside Rangers tonight. He has one from 23 yards out and uh, another one from uh, both of them actually from 23 yards out and he just kicked one from 26 yards out uh, to give the Riverside Rangers a 46 to 36 lead. Looks like the Horizon Scorpions will be coming up short in this one. And the Riverside Rangers will be going 4-0 and on the season. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you on the studio with 121 left in the ballgame. It is Riverside leading Horizon by the score of 46-36. to Okay, Joe, thank you very much. They're up two scores in that one. Looks like Riverside will be victorious. Let's head back out to Brandon Cohn. Join the Iceman for Anthony Cathedral. What a finish, Brandon. Seven seconds to go, 20-19 to 19, Cathedral over Anthony. And Anthony are just attempted a... 20-yard pass that was no good into the end zone from Solis to Uskanga. It's going to be a 15, 27-yard field goal attempt for the win. Up and no good. Wide left. And they're going nuts here at Burgess Mustang Stadium as the field goal is wide left. And the attempted kick was actually by... Sebastian Gardea, and that is no good. That's a wrap. What a spectacular way to end this game. Four seconds to go. It's going to be a final, and we're just waiting to, you know, all the things to happen here. But looks like it's going to be a 20-19 to 19 final. Cathedral by the skin of their teeth over Anthony. Woo, what a game there. A missed field goal for the win. Cathedral improves to 3-1 and one with a 2019 victory over Anthony. Let's head back out to our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Join Alex Nicholas for Delvai and Canateo. This one tied at 28 at last check. Alex, what do you got? Still tied at 28 all between Canoteo and Delvai. 24 seconds to go. Canoteo's punting. This is a high punt going to the far side. LJ Martin with a nice boot. 
and he goes out of bounds inside. Let's see what they're going to mark it at the Gano Dio 35-yard line is where Del Valle will take over. 17 seconds to go, 28 all. Del Valle with no timeouts. It's going to be interesting to see if they try to chuck it or chuck it down the field here to maybe get a, a long pass to Eli Molina or a pass interference if they got no timeouts left or are they going to sit on it to send it in it to overtime. So 17 seconds left here in the ballgame. Donald Theo and Del Valle tied at 28. Okay, thank you, Alex. Wow, looks like maybe – Overtime is imminent at that one in our Cisco Movers game of the week. What an exciting game there. Another exciting game and possible finish over at the sack. Last check, just a three-point game between Clint and El Dorado. Let's get an update from Steve Escajeda. Steve. We've got 10 seconds to go in the ball game. El Dorado on top of Clint, 30 to 27. Right now, the Lions have the ball third down and about six yards to go from the El Dorado 32-yard line. They just spiked the ball to stop it. Uh, in fact, uh, they just marked it now. It is fourth down, actually. Fourth down at about six to go. Um, in fact, they're going to go ahead and try a field goal Oof. to tie this ball game. It's going to be a, what, a 39, 49-yard field goal try. And, in fact, El Dorado is going to go ahead and call timeout to freeze him a little bit. Carlos Ariano. Again, he's going to try a 49-yard field goal to see if he can tie this ball game and send us to, send us to uh, overtime. Wow. Ten seconds, you said, on the clock, Steve, right? Fourth Ten and six? to go. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I don't, I don't think I play it. Well, they, they don't throw the football. That's the biggest problem. I'd say throw it, pick up that first down, stop the clock, spike it, and then try your field goal. Speaking of overtime, we have overtime in our Cisco Movers game of the week. Canateo Dovai going to overtime. We'll have an update from Alex in just a little bit. Steve, back to you. Okay, both teams are coming back onto the field. Again, 10 seconds to go in this ball game at the sack. El Dorado 30, Clint 27. Carlos Ariano is on there to. Try a 39, I'm sorry, a 49 yard field goal to try to tie this guy up and send it into overtime. We're waiting for the snap. He gives his okay. There it is. He's got it. The kick is up. It is going to be ball. He's giving a good try. Just a little bit wide left and no good. And there's six seconds left to go. And this one in El Dorado is about to win their first game of the season. Six seconds to go here in the ball game, El Dorado, out in front of Clint, 30 to 27. All right, Steve, thank you very much. El Dorado going to be victorious in that one, their first win of the year, one and three. Let's go to Jaime Chavez at last check. Jefferson holding a slim 28-21 lead over Isleta. That game tied at halftime at 21. Coach, what do you got there between Isleta and Jefferson? 9-0-4 9-0-4 left in the fourth quarter. It is still Jefferson 28 and Isleta 21. The only score this half is Arturo Rubio of Jefferson, a 42-yard touchdown run. That extra point was good. Rubio running strong tonight, 16 carries, 125 yards rushing. And uh, good numbers by the quarterbacks. Damien Contreras, three touchdown passes for Isleta. He's 14 of 23 and 230 yards passing. And uh, Nathan Alcala, he's got... He's 11 of 15 for 223 yards and two touchdowns. And he said, I just got a huge run. Tommy Ringo just flipped off a 35-yard run for his letter. He's moved. They moved the ball all the way. They're going to mark it at the two-yard line. A huge run by Tommy Ringo, who's got the six carries for 69 yards rushing for uh, – Isleta tonight, Isleta trying to tie the game with 8-18 left. They're down by 7, and they've got the ball first and goal at the 2 with the handoff by Contreras. Contreras is going to keep it, and no, yeah, he's got it. Contreras, Damon Contreras, a two-yard touchdown run, and the extra point is pending. And, and now the score is uh, with 8-08 left in the fourth quarter. It is now Jefferson 28, and Isleta 27 with the extra point pending. Okay, Coach, let's stick with you. Let's see if the Isleta can tie this up with the extra point. But what an exciting second half there between Isleta and Jefferson. Let's go back to you, Coach. Okay, well, we're getting ready for the extra point. Here's a, here's a snap. The ball is down. The kick is up. The kick is good. My 
Okay, so we've got a tie ball game with 8-0 left in the fourth quarter. An exciting matchup here at Silver Fox Stadium. All tied once again. Jefferson 28 and Estrella 28. All right, Coach. Thank you so much. Speaking of games tied at 28, let's head out back to our game of the week. Tied at 28 and going into overtime. Delvai and Kennetio, let's join Alex Nicholas with an update. Alex. Welcome back to Lowenborg Stadium, gentlemen. It's the first overtime session tied at 28 all. And Del Valle is on offense first. Canotillo won the toss. They, of course, going on defense for the defense rules. So right now, Del Valle with a second down. We'll call it about five from the 11-yard line as Ramos rolls to his right, throws right, tip, and it's going to be intercepted. And back the other way goes L.J. Martin at the 25, cut to the middle of the field, and he's down around the 30-yard line. L.J. Martin with a tip. An interception, let me just double-check that it's four. It is the tallest player on the field, and it is L.J. Martin. He already has three touchdowns in this game and then comes up with a huge defensive play, and Cano Theo will take over on down. Here in the uh, first overtime, tied at 28, Cano Theo and Del Valle. That's amazing. Alex, stick on the line. We want to we wanna hear more from this one. L.J. Martin, what did he have? A, a 58-yard touchdown run in the first. He had a 70-yard touchdown run in the second. And then a 70-yard touchdown reception in the second half. Three touchdowns for L.J. Martin. Now a huge interception in overtime. Yeah, in overtime, which means they started the 25. I'm not sure I picked up that totally. It sounded like he returned the interception to the 30-yard line. If they were already starting at the 25. They were inside the 10 on that one. and he. Oh, he, yeah. I got you, Alex. Hey, he tried, tried to right return the interception. And on he was, if he scores a touchdown, uh, that's the thing. If, he, if, he, if nobody tackles him, they automatically win that contest. Now, Kenny Gio, of course, with a crack to win this thing uh, on their own, on offense. Absolutely. Kenny Gio going on offense at home at Julius and Irene Lowenberg with Stadium. With a nice field goal kicker. Absolutely. Let's go back to you, Alex. What do we got here, and how's, uh, how's Kenny Gio shaping up on offense? Martin with a first down run up the left side. It was a three-yard game. So we're at the 22-yard line. Ball here on the near hash. Cano Theo will go four wide. Martin's to the right of the quarterback, Devin Granados. As it looks like Del Valle is going to rush through. They drop back everybody. They give it to Martin left side. Martin looking for room. Cuts to his right. Crosses the 20. And is going to be brought down shy of the first down. We'll call it around the 18-yard line. So a pickup of four officially there, and now a third down and three. And, of course, like Paul said, we'll see uh, Cano Theo if they're going to kick it here oh, after this third down play. Obviously, Martin's the horse, 20 carries, 187 yards. He's actually been quiet in the second half. I think I had him for 160 in the first half. It's really been Del Valle who's been controlling the football here. So it's a third down. The board has it three at the 18-yard at the line ball still. On the near hash, the Cano Theo will flip trips to the near side, outside the numbers, near the sideline. Martin in the back gets the carry. Going left, has space, the first down and more. Spins out of a tackle, still on his feet inside the 10, and he's brought down by a host of Cano Theo defenders at the 9-yard line. So Cano Theo are, Cano Theo's knocking on the door, gentlemen. Wow, this is the, the, the Canateo show, the L.J. Martin show, done it all on, on offense, now defense in overtime, and just gaining those grinding yards right now, getting Canateo in position. And a terrific reminder of how great things used to be in uh, 2 5 a with Eastlake, Del Valle, and Canateo all fighting it out every year. And, and Alex, you're looking at it one more time again tonight. Boy, exciting game. Alex, uh, let's, let's see what they do here. Are they setting up for a field goal? First and goal, actually, from the eight. Granados fakes it, keeps it left, has space at the five, puts his head down, carries a defender, but he's pushed out of bounds at the one, about the half-yard line, or they're going to mark it. Actually, the near side of this is going to mark it at the two. I thought he maybe got a little bit of extra push to the one, so a six-yard pickup, and that will bring up, where's the box? That'll bring up a second down and goal from a box. Well, they're going to mark it at the two, so Granados with a six-yard run. 38 yards on uh, 38 tough yards for Granados on the evening so far. Wow, amazing! I gotta, I gotta hand it to him. I, timeout, Canotillo. Canotillo will call time. a timeout. Tied at 20. I think they're probably talking about let's just bring the field goal kicker in, uh, line up, kick the field goal. Let's go you know, for what's it. Interesting here, what they're doing is they're actually calling. Uh, I think what they're doing is they call Jesse Carrillo. Or Jesus Carrillo, their their linebacker. Chewy. I'm thinking here they might give him the ball a little. Uh, not, maybe not the fridge, refrigerator Perry, but their version of the fridge, their big linebacker. He might get it on here because he was here on the near sideline waving a flag, 
and Coach Brooks called him out here to get on the field. So, uh, <laughs> or. Or are they bringing him in to block for L.J. Martin to clear, yeah. to, clear the, to clear the way? And that's what yeah. – so right here, actually what they're going to do, they're going to go wildcat. Martin will be the quarterback. They're going to line up Carillo to the left of them. Granados is in the slot to the right. Ball on the left pass to give the Martin up the left side. And Gano feels a winner. 34-28 Martin with his fourth touchdown of the night. This one's from two yards out. And Gano feels – they get their first win over Del Vice since 2016, 38 to 24. Your final. I think we have a player of the game, our player of the night candidate, boys. What do y'all think? Like there's a studio. Uh, <laughs> let's let's name it right now. Our Taco Avocat player of the week, L.J. Martin, four touchdowns, a critical interception on Devai in overtime. Oh my gosh, what a game of the week! Absolutely awesome. Delvai wins it. I'm sorry, Kenatia wins it. 34-28 over Delvai. What a finish for the Kennedy Eagles. Yeah, marvelous game. I was going to say Chewy Carrillo is the blocking back. I thought that was our MVP, but uh, but no. Wow, what a great game. And uh, these guys have had lots of them. And boy, there have been a lot of great games. Uh, by the way, here tonight, uh, one of them just wrapped up. That was uh, the Cathedral uh, Brandon Cones game. But remember, we still have... Uh, uh, the Jeff Asleta game out there, 28-28. I think we're going to wind up in, in, in the night up with uh, one Jaime Chavez. Time And, and there's some wrap-ups, I think, coming. Uh, Sal Montes is telling us. I think uh, Brandon Cohn's ready to wrap one. Joe Rodriguez as well, possibly. Okay. Oh, what's all that sign language okay. over there? We got an update from Brandon Cohn. Uh, final, uh, Brandon, uh, what, what's the wrap-up you got from uh, Mustang Stadium between Anthony and Cathedral? Yeah, it's a final here at 20 to 19. Cathedral over Anthony. For Cathedral, they move to 3 and 1. Next, they'll face Stan Ellie on the 24th. Quarterback Fernando Yurate, 15 of 27, 146 yards. A TD, a keeper on the ground for him. Running back Rafael Ramirez, 21 carries, a buck 69, two touchdowns. Wide receiver Ray Hernandez, seven receptions, 111 yards. Anthony moves to 2 and 2 on the year. They'll be at McCarmy next Thursday, the 23rd. Their quarterback, Angel Solis, 9 of 17, 158 through the air, one touchdown. Running back, Raymond Hernandez, 27 carries, 113 yards, two touchdowns. Wideout, Diego Escada, four receptions, 96 yards. And wideout, Anthony Camaras, five receptions, one TD. And, of course, the missed 32-yard field goal with four seconds left that would have given Anthony the win. We have a final cathedral, a spectacular win here at Mustang Stadium on their homecoming night. 20 to 19 over Anthony. Awesome, Brandon. Thank you so much. Cathedral improves to three and one on the season. Anthony falls to two and two. Brandon, great job. We'll see you at the Union Draft House on Sunland Park. That's home to our post game show and party of food and drinks at Union Draft House on Sunland Park. Let's head back out to Coach Jaime Chavez. A close game between Jefferson and Isleta. Coach, what do you got? 21 left in the fourth quarter. It is now Jefferson 34 and it's led a 28. Quarterback Nathan Alcala just had a 10 yard touchdown run and the extra point was botched as the snap was high and, and as Alcala was attempting to kick the ball to attempt the extra point, his holder had to catch the ball and just eat it, just fell on the ball so they, they could avoid some sort of disaster. So with the score standing at Jeff 34. And it's led at 28 with 441 left in the fourth quarter. And running strong tonight, especially the, in the second half for uh, the Jefferson Silver Foxes, is Arturo Rubio. Tremendous numbers tonight. He had 21 carries, 160 yards rushing, and the 42-yard touchdown run. And so Jefferson just kicked off right now, and he's led will have the ball. Let's see where they place the ball. They should place it at about the 40. Pretty good, pretty good field position at their own 41-yard line. And Estrella has moved the ball. They've been moving the ball well since the, the second quarter when they started to score some more points. And the quarterback, he's um, looks like they're going to line up. He's got uh, two, three wide receivers to the right. That's Damon Contreras. And he's got his one running back and another wide receiver to the left. As he barks out the signals, and he'll hand off the ball. And, oh, a, a, a huge loss! That's a big loss for that. Tommy Ringo who has run well tonight. Uh, that's going to be a six-yard loss, 
and that'll be second down. Okay, uh, Coach, uh, let's break in right here. We have an update from Riverfront Stadium, but we'll catch you up in a little bit. Still about three minutes to go in that game. Uh, Riverfront Stadium, let's join Joe Rodriguez for Horizon and Riverside. Joe. Thank you very much, Bo. All final out here at Riverfront Stadium where the Riverside Rangers have picked up their fourth victory of this 2021 season by defeating the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 46-36. to A couple of final stats uh, for this one. Uh, the Riverside Rangers, uh, all, all of these stats were a lot closer than what the 10-point score indicates. Uh, the Horizon Scorpions and the Riverside Rangers both had 18 first downs. Uh, the Riverside Rangers ran 42 plays for 302 yards. The uh, quarterback, um, <laughs> excuse me, the quarterback, uh, Angel Munoz, went 7 for 13, 134 yards for a total of 436 total offensive yards compared to the Horizon Scorpions, 420 yards. Uh, Angel Munoz, definitely the player of the game here. He carried the ball 23 times out of the quarterback position for 196 yards. He had three rushing touchdowns. He also went 134 through the air and had one passing touchdown. you got to keep in mind that their star player, Jose Guardado, did not see any action today, uh, but I don't think that would have been made, made much difference. I think just uh, the, the yards would have been distributed a little bit differently uh, for the Riverside Rangers. Over on the Horizon Scorpion side of things, uh, well, you got to give it to quarterback Jacob Quijada, who went, carried the ball 14 times for 150 six yards today a majority of that a significant majority of that came in the second half where Gijas had 122 yards in the second half alone he had uh, two touchdowns and you also can't forget about the running back Ernie Garcia he carried the ball uh, 19 times for 188 yards he had two touchdowns and of course Jacob Gijas also had 151 yards through the air and one touchdown pass for the Horizon Scorpions next week they have another road game they visit uh, the neighborhood of Ranchland um, out in uh, El Paso Texas to make the trip into town from Horizon to face the Beller Highlanders on the road at Highlander Stadium meanwhile the Riverside Rangers will also be traveling heading east to face Monaghan that's it for tonight I'm making my way out to Union Draft House where, but I'm out here at Riverside uh, Rangers Stadium or Riverfront Stadium, excuse me, where the Riverside Rangers defeat the Horizon Scorpions by the score of 46 to 36. All right, Joe, great job. A big win for the Riverside Rangers. Made it a little bit closer than I'm sure they would have liked, but 46-36 Riverside over Horizon. Some other final scores we have for you. Chapin tops Irvin 56-14. Also, Parkland defeats Bowie. 50 to 0. Bel Air tops Sanelli 45 to 7. Burgess tops Hanks 68 to 6. Mountain View over Hatch Valley Big 45 nothing. Bo Jr. Salcedo, the quarterback, six touchdown passes in that one. Not running the score up. The backup quarterback Ooh. got hurt. They had to throw Salcedo back in there. And when they threw him, he threw as well. And as I said, six TDs later. And it's a final in Las Cruces. The Bulldogs win their sixth straight over the Mayfield Trojans, this time by the score of 35-14 Las Cruces over Mayfield. At last check, we had Jefferson in a tight one, 34-28, with just four minutes to go at uh, Silver Fox Stadium. Let's join the coach, Jaime Chavez, with an update on Isleta and Jefferson. Coach. We've got 124 left in the fourth quarter. It is still Jefferson 34 and it's led at 28. And Damon Contreras has just taken off on a nine yard run. It was second and goal at the 10. And he, and he was stopped at the one yard run. Looks like he was about to go in. And now he's, um, they're waiting. He's looking uh, at the sidelines to see, uh, as the play comes in and the, the clock is moving at 59 seconds. Jefferson leading 34 to 28 and Jefferson, they, they scored a touchdown on the previous series, a 10 yard touchdown run by Nathan Ancala, but the extra point was, uh, was botched. And, and now he's set up, calls a timeout. They've got a third and goal at the one yard line. And he has come back strong. The, the teams have just been, uh, trading punches from the, uh, second quarter on. And some huge numbers for uh, Damien Contreras, 16 of 25, 285 yards passing and three touchdown passes. 
and also uh, Nathan Ancala. He's also thrown the ball well tonight, 13 of 22, 225 yards, two touchdown passes, and he also has a one-yard touchdown run. And running strong for for Jefferson, Arturo Rubio, 16 carries, 125 yards rushing. And the clock has stopped at 52 seconds All right. left in the contest. Okay, Jefferson Coach. Leading. We're going to go through a couple scores real quick and get back to you in just a few moments. A uh, huge night for L.J. Martin of the Canateo Eagles in our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. L.J. Martin, four touchdowns and a clinching interception, nearly a clinching interception in overtime. Uh, what a job by L.J. Martin as Canateo defeats Delvai 34-28. Cathedral in a tight one over Anthony 2019. Riverside over Horizon 46-36. Wow. Elder- goal with the one. El Dorado, 30-27 over Clint. All right, Coach, let's go back to you at Silver Fox Stadium. Fourth and green with the one for Isleta. The clock is moving with 25 seconds left. Damien Contreras just ran it to the uh, one-yard gain to the one-yard line. The clock continues to move with 14 seconds. And Jefferson is up 34 to 28. And let's see. Yes, okay. Looks like yeah, yes, later we'll call a timeout. That's their second timeout. And they'll have one timeout after this, just depending on what happens. Eight seconds left in this contest, and Jefferson is up thirty four to twenty eight. A tremendous effort by by both offenses. And and again very some very strong running by Jefferson's Arturo Rubio. He carried the load in the fourth quarter. With uh, 16 carries altogether tonight, 16 carries, 125 yards rushing, and he had that big 42-yard touchdown run. But it looks like Isleta has just come back strong, and, and Damon Contreras has put up some big numbers tonight, 16 of 25, 285 yards passing, three touchdowns. He's, and he's just come down clutch, and here it is with eight seconds left, 34 to 28, Jefferson leads. And it's fourth and goal at the one. For Isleta and Contreras is in the shotgun, and now Jefferson calls their last timeout. They're going to look this over. Woo! Wow. <laughs> what a game. Set the stage for us. They're on the one-yard line, eight seconds uh, left. Fourth down. Eight, eight, eight seconds left. And on the previous play, it looked as though Contreras had gone in, but there was a big stop by one of uh, Jefferson's linebackers, and he stopped him at the one-yard line. And it's gutsy right here with a fourth and goal at the one with eight seconds left. And Jaime, the, 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 the ironic part of this whole thing is Asleta got back into this thing with a throwing game. You just gave us all those great stats from Contreras, what he did, the, the long touchdown passes. They do have John De La Rosa. Remember the guy finished uh, with back-to-back 300-yard seasons uh, a year ago. Uh, Han- Hanks was one of those uh, to get out. But now they need to run the football. They got the big quarterback. Uh, and you sit out of the shotgun, so they've been throwing the ball to get back in this thing, but now they need to run on fourth and one, get in the end zone, and run away with a huge victory. Here we go. And he's, he's in the shotgun. He's got three wide receivers to the right, fourth and goal at the one, and he parks out the signal. He's got the ball. Touchdown. He goes in. Damon Contreras, a one-year touchdown run, and there's five seconds left on the clock. And if they make an extra point, they could very likely win this one. And this one, coming back to Haunt Jefferson, because they missed the extra point on their previous touchdown. Ooh. Nathan Alcala, he had a 10-yard touchdown run, but that extra point was blocked. And here we go with the extra point instead of the all-important extra point. Now the game, five seconds left. game tied at 34, critical extra point here. Is it kick the ball? It's good. The kick is good. Right to the uprights. And with five seconds left, Isleta is winning 35-34 to 34 over Jeff. Wow. And Jefferson's undefeated season. Boy, what too good right now. What an exciting game here. Jefferson led this game 21-0 in the second quarter. The Isleta Indians come roaring back. Remember, they got had a very, very tough game against Riverside last week, showing a lot of fight tonight. And now lead 
Jefferson, 35-34, just five seconds left. Amazing game by the Isleta Indians. And, and a big, uh, some big plays that you mentioned. Uh, uh, Damon Contreras, uh, he, he throws the ball, he, he throws it well downfield, and, and he had uh, three touchdown passes. And and his, um, he threw a 48 yard touchdown pass to Isaiah Burado, and then a 42 yard touchdown pass to Andres Martinez, and then a, a nine yard touchdown pass to Gavin Espino just before the the half. And he started to pick up steam in the second half. And, and now, boy, this is interesting. It looks like the the for the uh, this onsides with five seconds left in the sled of winning thirty five to thirty four. They've got the the big hand, the hand specialists, the are up front, and they've got uh, only one man is deep for uh, it looks like Roman Gomez for Jefferson. He's the only deep man. Five seconds. And his letters up 35 to 34, and we're waiting for the kick, and here it goes. Here's a squib kick, and it's picked up at about the 31-yard line. And that's uh, Nathan Herrera, and now he passes the ball back, and then there's a... Oh, and then another pass, and, the, and then the ball is intercepted, and that should do it. Right about the... Jefferson sort of stuck in and just going back and forth at the 34-yard line. That is it. That's the final score tonight. A big game for Yisleta. Yisleta getting back on track. And the final tonight here at Silver Fox Stadium, Yisleta 35, Jefferson 34. All right, Coach. Thank you so much. What a game. The Isleta Indians come back and they get it done. 35-34, victorious over Jefferson. And the kicker, Isaac Ortega, with the winning kick. How often do you get to do that? Oh, it's just an extra point. Well, this time it was only the difference between a win and overtime. And Isaac Ortega splits the uprights. And Asleta comes away with the unbelievable 35-34 come from behind win. Amazing. Hey, we have... Final scores from all over the borderland. Every game is a final. We'll have all your final scores and recaps. Next, you're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. You're listening to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso. Let's go back to Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon. All right, thank you, Sal. Got to hand it to Sal Montez. Been doing this for seven years. This is his last night, and what a memorable night. We got overtime. We got your cousin scoring touchdowns. It's just been oh, man. an awesome night. It's been awesome. Uh, I'm a Jefferson graduate as well, so obviously a good game right there. Uh, Gavin's not getting any Christmas presents because of what happened. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, it's been a blast, man. I'm I'm going to start crying right now like five minutes. But nonetheless, though, so many good players. You heard the likes of LJ Martin probably like 15 different times. Of course, uh, Gavin Espino, Alcala as well. Plenty more. Um, uh, Contreras, how could we forget him? So many great athletes. Uh, but I don't want to steal the spotlight from you guys. You have all the stats, but I'm super grateful. Thank you, guys. But, yeah, this has been a blast. Week four, this has easily been the most fun night. And it starts with our Cisco Movers Game of the Week. Delvai and Canatillo. Canatillo. Tops Delvai 34 28 in overtime and other action. Isleta tops Jefferson on the last play of the game 35 34 game winning extra point after a, a short touchdown run from Damon Contreras. 35-34 is led over Jefferson. Other scores. Chapin tops Irvin 56-14. Cathedral holds on barely over Anthony, winning 20-19. Riverside over Horizon, 46-36. El Dorado holds on to defeat Clint, 30-27. Parkland has no problem with Bowie, winning 50-0. Burgess tops Hanks, 68-6. Bel Air over San Elizario, 45-7. Mountain View tops Hatch Valley, 45 nothing. Las Cruces and Mayfield, a battle of rivals at the Field of Dreams. Las Cruces tops Mayfield 35-14. And an out-of-town action down in Tornillo. Ira Ann tops Tornillo 34-23. Tornillo falls to 0-3. And earlier today, Pecos tops Fabens. 
Once again, that's the Pecos Eagles over the Fabens Wildcats, 31-26. For a recap, and a final to finalize a wild game of the week, let's go to Alex Nicholas at Lowenberg Stadium. Alex. Good evening, gentlemen. Live from the track at Lowenberg Stadium. It's all over here. 34-28, Ganocillo with the win. The storyline tonight, of course, Mr. L.J. Martin, 198 rushing yards, three touchdowns. That's now 20 career rushing touchdowns for Martin. Had a 75-yard touchdown catch and an interception uh, in overtime to set up his three-yard touchdown run to end the game. Devin Granados, the Canopio quarterback, very steady tonight, completed just seven passes but threw for 223 yards, two touchdowns. Canopio was 458 total yards of offense, but defensively got to give a big shout-out to Jesus Chuy Carrillo. I had him for nine tackles, a fumble recovery, two uh, tackles for loss. One was a sack. He was just all over the place making plays this evening. For Del Valle, Jesse Ramos, 19 of 29, passing 268 yards, threw for a touchdown, ran for two more. Eli Molina, seven catches for 147 yards. And, guys, I had to get the story from L.J. Martin. What did he eat before this ball game? And the story, if y'all want to have a big game like L.J. Martin, dig yourself to Canes and get you that Caniac because that's what L.J. Martin <laughs> eats before the game. And you guys see the, the results. So the proof is in the pudding. Picks up a P5 offer this week, runs for 198 yards, three tuts. A 75-yard touchdown catch and an interception. So a big week, big night for the Canotillo Eagles as they defeat Cano, uh, defeat Del Valle 34 to 28 and move to three and one on the season. Del Valle drops to three and one. They got a big one at Parkland coming up after a bye week next week or uh, in two weeks, excuse me. So final score from Lowenberg Stadium: Canotillo 24, Del Valle 28. All right, Alex, thank you very much. 34-28, Canatillo over Devai in overtime. For another wrap-up from McKee Stadium at Austin High School between Irvin and Chapin, let's head out to Joey Panisi. Joey. Yes, uh, wrapping things up here. The lights are going out. Uh, the Chapin football team did not disappoint on homecoming night. Final score, Chapin 56, Irvin 14. Uh, it was to showcase two quality quarterbacks, uh, Mason Standiford from Chapin and John Knutson from Irvin. Uh, Standiford got the nod tonight. Here's some stats for him, and they're incredible. He was 13 for 14, 273 yards passing for five TDs. He rushed for 40 yards and rushed for a TD. Andrew Garcia, nobody even knew who he was. He had one rush and 38 yards. They put him in towards the end to let him get some playing time. Uh, the guy that kept the offense going was uh, Maurice Jenkins. He's one of their best running backs. Uh, he averaged 12 um, yards per rush, 12 rushes, 86 yards. Uh, Timothy Pastron, four catches, two touchdowns. Anthony Rivera, three catches, 90 yards, two touchdowns. Zach Ortega, two catches, a touchdown. And Adrian Reyes, a 10-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. So that sums it up for Chapin. Uh, penalties hurt them. They, they've got to get those if they're going to be a contender in district. They had five holding, three clipping, two pass interference, and, and two offsides. Um, they're talented. Uh, most of the guys play both sides of the ball. They're going to make some noise. Um, Irvin, on the other hand, John Knutson, he just couldn't do it all himself. Uh, the, the, the defensive and offensive lines from Chapin were just dominating the game. and John uh, Knutson was uh, scrambling for his life the whole game. Uh, he wound up 12 for 20, 159 yards, and he did throw for a touchdown. And uh, he rushed for 43 yards and snuck one in uh, from six yards out. Um, Isaac Herrera had three catches and one touchdown. So that the night ends with Chapin going uh, into their next game. Uh, they're 2-2 two and two for Coach Ryan Werner, and they'll host Austin at Austin next week. Uh, Joey Urias and his team, uh, they end the game 2-2. Two and two. And they will head to El Paso High for their next bowl game. So that'll do it for Chapin and uh, Irvin. Chapin 56, Irvin 14. All right, Joey, thank you very much. Great job. And we'll see you at Union Draft House on Sunland Park. Hey, for a final from Matador Stadium, let's head out to J.D. Sursley for the Parkland Bowie matchup. J.D. Yeah, uh, well, 50 to 0. The Matadors were all over Bowie tonight. The three-headed dragon, Anthony Castillo, Isaiah Beasley, and Mark O'Bannon were just way too much for Bowie. 
the running backs at least probably had each 100 yards, multiple touchdowns. Um, and then the last few minutes of the game, Caleb Beach, number 51, ridiculous, ridiculously, uh, I guess, threw a punch and a fumble scourge. So not only is your team winning, you get a terrible penalty, and now you're going to miss the game next week. Uh, but other than that, uh, Matador's all over booty, 50-0. to zero. All right, JD. Thank you very much. Great job tonight. Uh, hate to end it on a on a fight like that. Hope everybody is okay. But Parkland gets their first win of the year, one and three. Now Parkland next week hosts Delvai, so that's going to be a Delvai team itching for a win and a chip on their shoulder. Um, and uh, let's now head back out to Steve Escajeda. And well, actually, we're going to get to our Longhorn distributing out of town scoreboard. Oh, okay, just before that, uh, let's, let's just uh, update. Well, we finally solved the mystery of uh, Midland Lee now legacy <laughs> and uh, why 29 nothing is the last score we got, and that's the same score we had at halftime. Lightning out at Grande Communications, and they just decided to, uh, uh, I don't believe it's canceled. I believe it's postponed and maybe wind up uh, playing the rest of that one. In the, well, you know, 29 zip, they, they might have just called it. But at the moment, it's a game in a lightning delay that's not going to be played anymore tonight. Elsewhere, Tascosa beat San, San Angelo Central 46 28. They moved to 3 and 1 on the season. Permian last week, Central this week. Emerald over Friendship 31 14. Here's the big one Wichita Falls Rider comes from behind. Nips Odessa at the buzzer 47 43. Rider stays undefeated 4 0 as they beat. Wow, what's looking to be a pretty tough Odessa Broncos team. They fall to 2-2. Two and two. Lubbock Coronado beat Midland on Thursday, 42-17. Canyon beats Caprock, 30-20. Cooper over Monterey. Lubbock Cooper, that is. 28-21. Nice bounce back win for them. Palador over Borger, 20-13. Wichita Falls gets their first win, 35-14 over Burke Burnett. Randall comes back to Nip Steven. To, excuse me, Pampa comes back to Nip Randall, battle two, battle the two and ones, 29-28. Pampa wins that one. They knew what night it was, the night of close ball games, and Dumas all over Plainview, 48-14 for the last time tonight. That is your Longhorn out, out-of-town scoreboard. All right, Longhorn Distributing, 55-16, East Paisano Drive. For another wrap-up from the sack, let's head back out to Steve Escajeda for the Clint Eldorado wrap-up. Steve. Yeah, Paul was talking about close bowl games. Oh, he sure had one at the sack. Final score, El Dorado 30, Clint 27. Uh, Clint was down 30 to 19 with uh, just three minutes to go in the bowl game, scoring a touchdown on a uh, quarterback run. They went for two, made it, and got the ball back. And again, uh, Carlos uh, Ariola's a 49-yard field goal try to tie the game with just 10 seconds to go in the ball game, just a little bit short and wide to the left. And uh, El Dorado holds on for their first victory of the season. They're one and three now, while Clint falls to two and two. Uh, individually for the Clint Lions, uh, they were led by, uh, of course, that, that vaunted ground attack. Uh, quarterback Isaiah Gonzalez, 13 carries, 115 yards, three big touchdowns by him. Uh, Miguel Holguin, nine carries, 41 yards, and that said, not much to speak of in the passing game. Uh, for El Dorado, the same thing. They they ran it almost uh, all night long. Uh, Isaiah Rudison, 19 carries, 285 yards, four big touchdowns on some huge touchdown runs. And uh, Thomas Nelson Betts also added uh, 75 yards on six carries. Uh, things kind of got tight as far as uh, total yards uh, were tonight. El Dorado, 360 on the ground, only 14 passes for 374, while Clint... Uh, 226 on the ground, 75 to the air. They finish with 301. For the Clinton Lions, uh, next Friday, they're going to be at home uh, against Big Spring, while El Dorado is going to try to make it two in a row when they travel to Isleta next week. Again, a final here at the sack. Great ball game. El Dorado holds on to knock off Clint 30 to 27. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Great job. Boy, you did uh, what a game out there. and What a game as we all went down to the wire. And lastly, uh, Jefferson and Isleta, that went down to the wire. 35-34, Isleta over Jeff. Isleta improves to 3-1 and one, while Jeff falls to 3-1. and one. So, Paul, as we look to next week, some of the big games I'm kind of looking at, Parkland and Delvai. Delvai is going to have a chip on the shoulder traveling to Matador Stadium. We'll see if Parkland can keep it up. And then Maltwood Franklin, 1-6-A and a bye this week. I'd like to see how these two teams come out of a bye and play over at Cougar Stadium. 
Yeah, no doubt. And and I think we're looking at two playoff teams in uh, in District 16A this year. I mean, it's going to be a tussle, but uh, those two among with uh, Eastwood and East Lake, you'd think would have to be uh, the front runners at the moment. And, and yeah, that's going to be a great one. Not just a great one. It's going to be an important one. You got to win these games. Who cares if it's week one of your district schedule? You don't win this one. It's going to come back to haunt you. And a big game for the Riverside Rangers. They travel to Monahans. That's where we're going to really find out which Riverside team is going to show up and, and who's going to play there and if they're going to contend not just for a district title, but possibly a bi-district and area title as well. Well, I tell you what, they're as hot as they've ever been. You know, we throw Tom Work around all, all the time. You know, this is not a Tom Work Riverside team, but it's a team trending toward a Tom Work uh, Riverside team. They're picking up momentum every week and really a terrific win over Horizon tonight. This was 4A versus 5A. And, uh, you know, when it was uh, nut cutting time, uh, 4A prevailed. Well, that does it for us at Football Friday Night. We'd like to say a special thank you for all the hard work over the years to Sal Montez. Done a fantastic job on the mic and behind the mic, uh, putting this show together, producing commercials, all the fun stuff, making it run smooth. And it's because of the silky smooth Sal Montez. So, Sal, thank you so much. Well, let's go celebrate you over at the Union Draft House on Sunland Park. I invite all of our friends over. To have a little food, little drinks, and some little celebrations for you. What do you say? I'm super excited. I'll be more than happy to take chicken wings from anybody out there. <laughs> but uh, no, in all seriousness, it's been a pleasure. Um, also, got to give a big, big shout out to Mark Miller as mm-hmm. well. Um, you know, shout out to Mark Miller part two. I have to get it out there, guys. Yeah. Also, um, P Mac, it's been a pleasure working with you. I've learned a lot. And Bo Bagley coming into the game and um, knowing what it's like on a live broadcast aspect. So, you know, we clicked right away. Shout out to all of the reporters as well throughout the years. And, um, yeah, I'm super excited. And how about going out like uh, with the games, going out tonight with the games that we have? You saved your best for last, man. You're going crazy. I don't know how you guys get this stuff on the air. But we didn't miss a play tonight. And then Bo and I, boy, what a great job. We know what a great job you did. I don't know exactly. how you get that stuff on the air, but Thank you, you sure did. And it's never been better than it was tonight. Thank yeah. you guys so much. And shout out to our intern, Angel Munoz, who we heard a lot of as well. <laughs> Another highlight player <laughs> out there. Scoring but, uh, all those touchdowns for Riverside. Job, yeah, Riverside. I don't know how he did it, but uh, yeah, we have a great team over here. And uh, I'm super proud to have been part of it. Absolutely. And I'm excited to be a part of it, too. And Sal, thanks uh, so much for the easy transition trans, uh, transition into uh, into radio just at, done a fantastic job so on behalf of everybody here at 600 espn el paso sal montes thank you so much for all the hard work you've put into this show and to, to all the radio shows you've been a part of especially sports talk and everything else so uh for paul mckinnon i'm bo bagley this does it for week four of football friday night thanks for tuning in to 600 espn el paso You've been listening to Football Friday Night with Bo Bagley and Paul McKinnon on 600 ESPN El Paso. Don't forget to follow the Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram at 600 ESPN El Paso. Visit us online at 600 ESPN El Paso.com for all of the latest regarding your high school football reports and more. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to Football Friday Night on 600 ESPN El Paso.